Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. All right. Uh, so I've had a couple of requests for an LTN tutorial. Uh, I did one a while ago, but uh, this time I'll, I think I'll actually take the time to chop out this part of the VOD and uh, make it a video that stands on its own. Uh, so, without further ado, the only mods we're using right now are editor extensions. So we have cheat items and infinite resources and such. Uh, LTN and pick -a dollies because that's a quality of life I don't want to live without. Speaking of which, uh, this might even be relevant, uh, even distribution, when we're playing with this stuff. So we're going to jump into a new save. Um, I've also had some questions about how to get the, the lab world. Um, that is just have the editor extensions uh, mod activated, go to start a new game, and you'll find this uh, editor extensions slash testing mod scenario. And it'll start you off with um, cheat power, RoboPort, uh, and that is a basically everything storage chest and, and uh, provider and a storage chest that's bottomless. Uh, so, without further ado, first of all, that feels better. Um, Let's start with the basics. Uh, for the moment, we're on default settings for the LTN mod. Uh, I won't change that just yet, but suffice to say, uh, I strongly recommend having a look at that thoroughly and probably changing quite a few of those settings. But for now, we will just start with uh, what we've got. Uh, come to think of it, I've gotten so used to the navigation satellite in space exploration uh, that maybe I should have included that mod as well. And we could just stick to some vanilla examples. But we'll live. Um, I'll use some of my existing rail blocks just to demonstrate this stuff. Okay, so the easiest thing to set up in LTN is a provider station. Um, I'm gonna... This would normally be where I put the... Uh, where's the train stop? You know what, I'm so used to... I'm so used to the layout now with space exploration, maybe I should use that for this part. Hey, Veldak? Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, so we have our LTN train stop. Um, I'm just going to put that, like, here. And then uh, we'll use some infinity chests. And we're just going to cheat uh, a specific amount of iron plate. Uh, how much goes in a train? I don't have the calculator mod. Okay, I knew there'd be a couple of things like this that were oversights, but it's going to slow me down if I don't, um, if I don't add these back in. So let's add space exploration as well. Why not? All of the examples, uh, for the buildings and stuff, I'll just avoid space exploration specific stuff, but there's, I've been playing space exploration so long, there's some muscle memory uh, built into it that I kind of take for granted. Like going to the nav satellite to place down ghosts. So let's try that again. We're going to jump into a new editor extension slash testing game. Uh, that's fine. And seems to have caught up. And 
and the first thing I'm going to do actually is launch a satellite with cheats, just so that we can use the navigation satellite. All right, and then I guess give me some uh, super speed modules. Even faster, please. And launch. Okay. So now we've got the Navig. Why is it so dark? Holy... Wow. That's... Is this what it looks like now without Afraid of the Dark? Okay. I... I'm just going to save this. Uh, LTN tutorial. Uh, I underestimated just how much that mod helped, even though things still looked pretty dark after a certain patch. Okay, take three. Maybe I should have just kept the same mods as Space Exploration and added, uh... I did activate Afraid of the Dark, right? That is not much better, if at all. Alright. Wait, I thought I made my character red. Here we go. Alright, so let's put down some rail, and we're going to start with... I was going to say why the bot's not building that. Uh, we're going to start with a... Logistic train stop, right about here. We'll put in some infinity chests. Last few days I noticed space exploration was data, but don't know don't know when that change was. It was like maybe a month ago at least. I could be a little bit wrong. But yeah, I, I really noticed after a certain point when I updated it. Um, let's pretend this is a full steel chest. And we're gonna put the same in all of these chests. Um First thing to understand with LTN, the easiest example uh, that we can come up with is when it comes to provider stations, all we need to do is feed it a positive number of whatever resource is available for pickup here. This can be faked with a... Um, Combinator, although I'm not entirely sure why you would want to do that to pretend that there's resources here that actually aren't. You could use it to get a train to come early, I suppose. Kind of like how with vanilla scheduling, you could have a train waiting here until it's full every time. Uh, but usually the way I prefer to do it is to simply feed a positive signal of whatever resource it is to the logistic train stop input, uh, and that's going to make LTN treat this as a pickup station. Uh, so to pair it with that, we also need a drop-off station. Let me put this a little bit further. A couple of signals in here. So for the drop-off station, um, all we need to do is the opposite. If we give LTN a positive signal to tell it that there's a resource available to pick up, the opposite of that is to give it a negative signal. 
uh, it's a little counterintuitive at first, but if you remember that um, when it comes to circuit network stuff, if we feed two of the same signal type uh, into a combinator or something, one iron plate plus two iron plate. Uh, we can see it's an input of three iron plate here. Negative two, that's going to turn into negative one. So it implicitly does addition and subtraction. Um, therefore, if this station was actually requesting iron plate, um, and we give it a signal for how much is in the chests already, um, Actually, let's put some steel chests here. If we give it a signal for how much is in the chests, that's going to be positive. Um, we can't change that without a combinator. Uh, so we're going to need a negative signal to offset that one. And I like to keep these why is a bit separate, but that's not strictly necessary. It depends what else you're doing with the circuitry, whether or not you're going to have some crosstalk issues here. I'll definitely need to review this VOD. I need to learn LTN. That's why we're doing it. Uh, Mr. Gecko, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Only watch for now. Can't hear often. Fair enough. Uh, so, I'm not going to change the LTN settings just yet, but we're going to stick with defaults. Uh, we are going to request 16,000 iron plate, and we will need a depot uh, of some sort. Actually, why don't I just use the depot design I've already got somewhere? Uh, if I can remember where I put it. Here we go. That should be fine. There's nothing space exploration specific in this. I'm pretty sure. And instead of having a vanilla trash train pick this stuff up, I'll just make these void chests. All right, so we're going to put in a, just how fast are these? 10 megawatts of acceleration power versus 600, ki wait, no. Yeah, versus 600 kilowatts. I like that it doesn't need fuel though. Let's give this a try. And we'll give it some regular old non-cheat cargo wagons. All right, so this stop is just called Depot. Um, we only need to give our train a schedule that says go to the Depot. It doesn't matter what else we put in here, um, because unfortunately we can't change much about how this part works. I would love it if LTN included uh, the option to... I, I think I heard that you could do this if you dig into the files and edit it yourself. Uh, like, change the mod itself, but not through the regular game options, uh, through mod settings. I would love it if we could have empty cargo inventory uh, be the condition before a train leaves the depot. But no matter what we put in here, this is just going to be replaced with five seconds of inactivity. And there's our schedule that it's automatically given us. Suzumni, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so these are all default settings. We've got two seconds of inactivity uh, as an additional condition for picking up the stuff. And it'll give up after 120 seconds. Same thing on the drop-off. 
I find some of this stuff problematic, but uh, uh, to each their own. The main thing to watch out for here is, given certain assumptions, if you're not aware of the default settings, uh, especially the kind of assumptions that I think are pretty reasonable to make as a new player uh, trying to learn LTN. Um, there are certain traps, like uh, if a train gets stuck somewhere because it's got no path, it'll be assumed destroyed after 10 minutes and LTN will send another one. Um, which, even if you've got a train, a, a strict train limit set somewhere, uh, it'll go over that limit. I'm also about to teach myself LTN soon, upgrading my base to a rail system as we speak. Nice. Jaws Balza, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I missed the L, that's hard to pronounce. Um, okay, so whenever LTN sets a schedule, You'll see some temporary stops are included. The reason it does this... Wow, that's fast. Uh, the reason it does this is in case you have the same named stations all over the place, uh, that basically just gets rid of the ambiguity. Uh, that's kind of really fast, though. Uh, I sort of don't want the train going that fast for the purposes of demonstrating this stuff. So let's just give this some super fuel. Oh, it stacks even higher as well. Oh wait, uh, this one. There we go. That's fine. I don't think that's going to run out. Um, so I'm just going to manually send that back to the depot. And we can add some circuitry here to maybe periodically empty this. Um, how about this? I'll just make it manual for the moment. Although, under certain circumstances, it's good to build a latch for these things. Uh, enable condition... Empty... Greater than zero. Wait, what? Uh, there we go. I got confused. E. And then we're just going to avoid this stuff here. Remove all. Okay. Is it a bad idea to name stations the same with LTN? Say if you have several places that provided iron plates... Uh, yeah, LTN deals with name ambiguity uh, perfectly. There's no issue with that. Um, so just to demonstrate this, what I might do is create another station with this name. Um, but it's not going to be attached to anything. It's just going to be sort of a pointless station. So we've now got... Well, actually, just to drive the point home... I'll add a bunch of these stations all over the place, so the odds of the odds of happening to go to the correct station would be low um, by chance. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to switch that off for now because once we get to the five seconds of inactivity complete, that's when LTN will schedule this. The reason LTN gives trains temporary stops is to get around the ambiguity of the station names. So you don't have to worry about station names at all with LTN. That it, They are merely a tool for the player to be able to understand what a station is about. 
So when this uh, pickup is scheduled, what's going to happen is LTN will schedule a temporary stop to go exactly where this train station is. And then the next stop after that temporary stop is going to be that station, which will have this name. So of course it's going to go to the nearest station with the name Iron Plate Pickup, which is going to be our destination. Um, so that's why you don't have to worry about station names with LTN. Uh, the function that they serve is honestly, I can like click on this station and just like vanilla, I can see how many trains are headed for a station with that name or have it in their schedule. Hey JP, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, we're going to stop emptying this for the moment. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is bump up the request on this. Instead of 16,000 iron plates, we're going to be looking for 16,999. In LTN, the default provide and request thresholds are 1,000. So what I expect to see here, as soon as our train gets back to our station, is nothing, actually. Because we haven't, we've got exactly 16,000 iron plate here. Um, I might throw down a power pole to demonstrate that. Although we can only see it saying 16k. Um... We've got 16k as a positive signal, and we've got negative 16k as a negative uh, negative signal. That would add up to zero. Um, I added another negative 999. So it's looking for 999. That is not enough to trigger a delivery here. Um, since the default request and provide priority is 1000. Now, if we bump that up by just one more, 17,000, we should immediately get a delivery here for exactly 1,000 iron plate. Fantastic. Uh, however, even though we only requested 1,000 iron plate, we're getting a full train load. Uh, and this is one of the one of the reasons that I say if you don't change the default settings, at least look over them. Because we we wanted uh, we wanted seventeen thousand iron plate, we got thirty two thousand. So if we were to set our request close to the maximum that can be stored here, for example, uh, that would definitely cause some problems. Actually, we can do that right now. Let's see. 24 chests, where's the calculator, uh, times 48 stacks times 100 is, I should have remembered this, 11, uh, 115,200. So let's say we request exactly that. It's going to take uh, about another five train loads. But what we're going to see here is... It's going to come and pick up iron plate and deliver 16,000 each time, even if it is only supposed to be delivering a thousand or so, because that's what happens with the default LTN settings. 80k. Uh, two more train loads and we should be at exactly seven. It's 7.2 train loads that fits in 24 chests. Here it comes up to 112. And here is our train. Uh, it is very, very full of iron plate. Nice brisk trains there, indeed. Whiskers, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So now what we've got is a very full train trying to deliver... 
what was supposed to be 3.2k iron plate. Uh, the storage is completely full, and after 120 seconds of failing to empty the train, it's going to go back to the depot. And if it does go back to the depot with these resources, and you don't have something in place to get rid of them... Oh, which we don't actually. This, uh, this is a perfect example. Because I didn't update this blueprint properly, there's a few, um, there's a few of these recycling, uh, inserters missing. So I'm going to empty this. And we're going to, I guess it's not going to matter in this instance, but imagine we were looking for copper plate. We're going to have the train arrive here full of iron plate already. Uh, and then it's going to insert a bunch of copper plate, and then we're getting the wrong resource delivered to this station. Uh, unless we have filter inserters in there, in which case it's going to try to deliver a full train load. Uh, the copper plate is going to block the iron plate. It's going to stay here until it gives up after 120 seconds. Then it's going to go here and try to unload it all and give up after 120 seconds. Then it's going to take the copper plate all the way back to the depot. Uh, so this is one of the one of the main examples for why I say change the settings. Um, other things that we can do with LTN um, that are quite neat, actually. I'm just trying to think of the best way to demonstrate it from uh, from sort of a blank canvas here. We can actually check what the train is looking for. And we can have a station that is uh, we can have multi-stations basically. In this instance, we could ob obviously put just a static filter on these things. Um, that would be easier. But just for the sake of demonstration, we're going to change that up a little bit. So this train is going... Uh, this station, rather, is going to look for one train load of iron and one train load of copper. We're going to connect these wires up here so it knows what's in both of these chests or sets of chests rather and what we're going to do with these inserters is read from the logistic train stop output set filters whitelist, and that's it. How do I... There we go. And I'll connect this red wire over here as well. Um, and I'll just make another station to provide copper plate. Uh, I'll just demonstrate as well. We can call it iron plate pickup. It doesn't actually matter in a technical sense. It's only like commenting your code. So we're going to change this to copper plate. And then our request for copper plate should be met by this train. So currently these inserters are not set to pick up anything. They're set to whitelist nothing. Uh, did I put those the wrong way around or something? Oh, I see. And here it comes. So whenever an LTN train arrives at the station, this combinator right here spits out a few things. Um, 
Although I actually forgot it's different for solids from fluids. The signals that we are getting from it right now, the 33 and 30 for the locomotive and the cargo wagons. I'm not sure why it needs to give us... Uh, let's demonstrate this here. I'm not sure why it ne needs to give us both encoded positions of every locomotive and encoded positions of locomotive, which serve exactly the same function. Uh, but it does. And the reason this says 33 and 30, respectively, is it is telling us in binary that we've got a locomotive here, a locomotive here, and our cargo wagons are here, 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 and here. So 33 is actually... Uh, let's lay this out in binary. Uh, turned off during daytime. Okay, then. Let's connect this like so. Anything greater than zero. Switch on. Okay. So what we've got here for the locomotives is 1, plus 0, plus 0, plus 0, plus 0, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So 1 plus 32 equals 33, and that's telling us uh, that we've got the locomotives at the ends. On the other hand, if we have... Uh, if we look at our cargo wagons, we've got 0 plus 2 plus... 4 plus 8 plus 16. Uh, so what's that? 6. Uh, 14 plus 16 is 30, which I believe that's what we got earlier. So with those signals, you can tell uh, what shape of train it is. Um, and you can do some fancy stuff with that if you like. Uh, what I was trying to demonstrate, though, um, I could actually show it over here instead. Um, we're just going to go red wire connecting like so. Let's send up... Uh, actually, let's make this set filters blacklist. Actually, I am a little bit confused by this now that I think about it. Doesn't it normally give us the contents of the train? Well, the, the total that the train was bringing from the logistic train stop output. Also, why is this train not leaving? Because I put it on manual. Okay, so it's going to come back to one of these two stations, uh, and on the red wire coming from the logistic train stop output, uh, it doesn't work until the train actually arrives here. Did I switch this off? No, I just need to uh, empty this. Provider stations? Yeah... No, I, I definitely use it. Uh, all right, so if we look here, we can see 4.8k. Oh, it's only looking for 4.8k. Except it picked up 16,000 instead. Yeah, so when a train comes to a, a stop to pick something up, we get a positive signal of uh, how much stuff it is trying to pick up. Uh, if it's a fluid at the drop-off station, we actually get a negative signal for the fluid that it's trying to empty itself of. We'll get a negative one. Um, but I 
I think with drop-off stations we get no such thing with solid. So... Yeah, now that I think about it, I think all of the times that I've done this fancy pickup thing have been... At, 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 every time I've used the LTN tr uh, train stop output with a bunch of fancy circuitry, it's been at a pickup station. The station sends what's inside the train, the LTN combinator sends what it's trying to pick up, yes. Um, so another example of how we can have one train stop doing multiple things because of this. Oops. Burgers and fries, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, that should fit. Cool. Alright, we're going to have a fluid pickup here. And uh, thank you for the follow as well. Uh, I guess we don't really need the tanks. This will be a good place to demonstrate just how fictitious uh, the signals that we give LTN can be if we want to. Um, I'm sick of these power poles. Let's get rid of the old ones. And we're going to put in some pylon substations. There we go. Alright, so on this side, let's do water. And on this side... We'll do crude oil. Probably some contamination in the fluid there. Uh, we're going to tell LTN that we've got 100k of each available for pickup. Water. Crude oil. And if we connect, let's use red wire for that one, so we don't have the cross-contamination there. Although I guess we're connecting to the logistic train stop output, so that wouldn't have happened. But I suppose it's better illustrated this way. Alright, we're going to put down a fluid wagon. Uh, fluid train. We'll give it some super fuel. And send it to the depot stop. We're also going to need a stop that is requesting fluid. So something like this. And we can just do something similar here. Uh, actually no, I would like to put down some fluid tanks this time. So it's a bit clearer what's happening. And on the other side as well. Important not to forget to tell LTN what we've got here. So that goes to the logistic train stop input. Uh, we're not going to bother to change the names of the stations here, just to show that we don't have to. 
and we're going to put in negative signals. So the thing to remember, uh, there's two things to remember to kind of make it a little bit more intuitive. The fact that we put negative signals in to one of our types of stations. Uh, LTN is always trying to push the value of whatever signal is at a station towards zero. Uh, so if we give it a positive number, it's going to come and try and take it. If we give it a negative number, it's going to bring something over to try and fill it up. Uh, and again, the other way to think about it is for a pickup station, a provider station, all you have to do, basically, apart from some settings if you want, is to just give it this green wire or red wire. Uh, just connect wiring to the uh, the storage. And if you have stuff available for pickup here, uh, and it reaches a, the required threshold, LTN will consider that to be available. So here we're going to put in a negative of 100,000 water. And crude oil. 100,000. And that yellow light means that a train has been scheduled to bring it to us. Since we haven't configured our circuitry here, nothing's happening. So here we see that at a pickup station, we get a positive value for whatever the train is trying to pick up. In this case, 100,000 water. Before I update that, I'm going to add some circuit wire to our pumps on this station. So they're not going to do anything when the train gets here. Uh, so here we're just going to say if crude oil is greater than zero, we're going to pump in crude oil. And if water is greater than zero, we're going to pump in water. So in this way we can have a multi-pickup for fluids. Come to think of it, I should probably use that in a oil block. Once the train gets here, unlike with our solids, uh, we get a negative value for whichever type of fluid the train is trying to empty itself of. So now we've got a signal of negative one water coming from the logistic train stop output. So let's say we want this side to be water. We're just going to say water less than zero. And then down here, crude oil less than zero. Doing all right, but it's way later than I should have been building the factory. Fair enough. Gonna hit the sack, take care of burgers and, burgers and fries. So here comes our crude oil. The correct pumps are activating. And then away goes our train to our train stop. Crude oil is less than zero on this red wire, so that's where, so on this side, the pumps are active. Uh, something to consider, especially with fluids, if we're asking for exactly a uh, 100k, uh, let me just change something here. Well, no, I could change it in the mod settings, but I'm going to do it on the combinator. The combinator always overwrites the default settings from the mod. So we're going to set request threshold to 100,000, which means we're not interested in getting a fluid delivery unless it is a full train with four wagons. If we set our requests to 100k, and then we're going to... I thought that was... Oh, there it is. We're going to pump all of this water out. Um, 
exactly 0%. Uh, I don't know if the super pump is going to change it, actually, but I think there should probably be some dregs of fluid left in the storage tanks. Let's try it with a regular pump down here, just to be sure. So crude oil, exactly 0%. Uh, let's speed it up a little bit. All right, so it is, yeah, there we go. Uh, we've gotten down to a very small amount of fluid, um, but it's not quite zero. So if our request threshold is 100k uh, and we're looking for 100k, we're not going to get a delivery here. So if we, if we set it, however, to let's say 120,000, that means once we get down to 20,000, it's going to schedule another train delivery. Uh, some other signals on the constant combinator that we feed into the logistic train stop include uh, minimum and maximum train length. Train uh, limit trains. This completely overwrites uh, the vanilla train limit. The vanilla train limit has absolutely no effect. Or well, maybe if you set it to zero, it might mess something up. I'm not sure. Um, but other than that, the vanilla train limit has no effect whatsoever on LTN's uh, train behavior. So if we set limit trains to let's say two. What is the default for that, I wonder? Uh, I've never actually noticed it. I would imagine it's one. Yeah, I'm not actually sure. Um, but if we have a train limit of two, Let's make another one. Then we can get both of these trains scheduled to come here at the same time. Uh, and the, the next train, if the train limit is one, uh, the next train won't actually be scheduled until the first one is gone all the way back to the depot. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. Thought that looked a little bit off. Um, can we perhaps avoid this water a bit faster? So we should see both of these trains scheduled at the same time to come to this station now. Cool. Um, what else is there? Those are just about the basics. All of the advanced circuit stuff that I do with LTN uh, basically just comes from... Okay, not all of it, but most of it comes from reading the logistic train stop output. Uh, at a drop-off, we can see... No, sorry, at a pickup station, we can see how much the train is supposed to be picking up. We can read from the vanilla-looking part... Well, the vanilla-ish part of the... Uh, of the train stop, the middle bit. Uh, we have read train contents here. Using an arithmetic combinator, we can subtract that from the total that the train is supposed to be getting. And we can calculate how much needs to be put in the train still. Um, it gets a little bit more complicated if there's more than one cargo wagon, because... We can read what's in the train, but not what's in the cargo wagons. So ultimately, we need to keep all of those perfectly in sync. 
uh, if we're precise loading multiple cargo wagons. However, with short trains, it's actually fairly easy. So I think I'll throw together an example for that, actually. We're going to have our short train pickup right about here. And I'll make another train. Just one cargo wagon. Uh, I'll run over and just jam some super fuel in there. Alright, so we're going to have just the one inserter. Hey, Tasman. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm going to copy this aggregate passive provider chest. I don't think it has any settings I need to worry about or anything, but... Um, yeah, it just has, like, a stack of everything in the game in there, I think. Okay. Um, so I'm going to take this and multiply the contents by, let's say, 5. Each times 5 output each. So we're telling LTN that there's 5 stacks of whatever we want in this chest. Uh, we're going to get a constant combinator. And we're going to tell LTN that we only want short trains here. The provide threshold... Uh, I'm just going to make it one for now. So the provide threshold is, is how much stuff needs to be available at a station before a delivery will be scheduled. And conversely, the request threshold is how much stuff has to be missing uh, at the drop-off station. So if if our request is 120,000 and our request threshold is 100,000, we have to drop down to 20,000 uh, water before it'll schedule another delivery for water. What editor is this? It's called Editor Extensions. Um, the mod is, if you just activate that mod and start a new game, uh, it'll give you this lab area, and I think editor extensions being active will give you all of these cheat items regardless, but I've never actually used it outside of that. Okay, so, so we've got our everything chest. We're telling LTN that we've got five stacks of everything physical available here. Uh, I'm going to put a drop-off station on the other side. And let's play with the requests. Uh, short trains only. Just one at a time, please. Not that we've got more than one right now. Okay. So, a good example of how we can use the... Uh, logistic train stop output to precisely put things into a train. We are going to read from the logistic train stop output. Uh, I think we will need to get rid of... No, we don't need to do any math for this one. Actually, yes we do. Yeah, I'll, I th I'll just add this in, and if I'm wrong about needing it, uh, we can trim it down later. So, because we get these signals from the logistic train stop output, uh, and we need to do some math with each. It's going to throw things off a little bit, potentially. 
So all this thing does is each greater than zero output each input count, and we give it negative a million for anything that we don't want to hear about. So now we've got the logistic train stop output minus these signals. Uh, at the end of this combinator, we're going to have whatever we're trying to put into the train. And just to make it a little bit more interesting, let's say that we're even loading multiple different types of things at the same time. Uh, it turns out the anything signal can be used to just choose one signal arbitrarily out of a bunch of them. So if anything greater than zero, output anything input count. Come to think of it, uh, I'm pretty sure we can just put that here. Yeah, so that saves us one combinator. And then we are going to have, unfortunately we can't set, what, what I wish I could do quite often when making these stations is to say set filters whitelist and set stack size whatever filter we're on would be very very convenient but unfortunately we can't do that so what we're going to do instead is say uh, each times one output s and that's going to be setting our stack size. So it's just converting whatever signal it receives into an S signal as well. So now if we ask for a short train to bring us uh, let's just put down a stack inside of here. I'll switch this off for a moment. Let's say we want 17 logistic robots and 23 construction robots. Once I turn this on, we should get a delivery scheduled for exactly that. Thanks for the explanation. You're welcome from the short train or could it be I've forgotten something we need to set the request threshold lower the default is 1000 request threshold 1 and no train to transport from this to that length between three and three found. Oh, I haven't put the... I, I haven't given this one the schedule to go to the depot. There it is. Okay, so we can see on the schedule it's going to pick up 17 logistic bots and 23 construction bots. Once it gets here, uh, actually... Hmm. Something is amiss. It could be that I forgot to check how much is in the train. I was about to try and slow that down so that we could see it more clearly, but I was a bit late as well. Alright, so this is the part where we connect the vanilla-ish part of the train stop. We read train contents, multiply that by negative one. Uh, so we can see there's 900 and something bots in here right now and we're just going to is that gonna work yeah I think so uh, we're just gonna add that negative signal to this part here and then I'm gonna take those bots back so it's put in exactly 17 logistic bots uh, it's still looking for 23 construction bots. Come to think of it, I don't think we actually need the 
anything as opposed to each here because the filter inserter implicitly, because it can only fit one filter, it just sort of picks the same arbitrary first signal here. Um, I'm just going to slow this down so we can see it a bit more clearly. And I'm going to change this to each. And there is our construction bots. Cool. Um, I'm going to change it so that next time we look for almost five stacks of each of these. And speed that back up. Okay. So once it gets back to the depot, it's going to be given the same schedule again. There it goes. It doesn't even actually have to get finished with the five seconds of inactivity. I didn't realize that. So we're trying to pick up exactly 243 and 247. We can see the construction bot and logistic bot signal coming off of this thing. It's arbitrarily doing the logistic bot signal first. Subtracting what's in the train, that is kind of fast. Uh, we actually got too much. We got 250 something logistic bots. How did I do this before? I think... Oh yeah, I, I think I see what we need to do here. Uh, we do need the anything signal. And we need it between these two. So we're just going to arbitrarily pick one signal out of everything that remains to be put into the train. Uh, so this is what LTN is asking for, What's in minus what's in the train goes into this thing, and then we use anything to just pick one signal at a time. Let's pick this up again. So our train is empty. Uh... If I do this again, yeah, we still have our signal. Cool. So we should get exactly 243 and 247. You can see the S decreasing as well as we need to put fewer and fewer bots into the train. 247, 243. Perfect. So we'll review this once more. Um... This part is just to get rid of the signals that we don't need to use, because we're going to be doing some math. Actually, let's find out. Uh, normally, this is because we need to divide by the number of chests if it's a longer train. This part might not be necessary. So we've got a pos uh, we've got the total that we're supposed to put into the train. Uh, we've got... No, that's definitely going to theoretically... Yeah, it's picking the output signal that isn't of use to us right now. I definitely shouldn't have removed that one. Undo levels don't include changing wiring, so let's just do that. So we're using each greater than zero output each and a bunch of huge negative constants to get rid of these signals that are not helping us right now. This green wire, or this output right here, gives us what the train is asking for. Each times negative one coming from read train contents goes to the same green wire. That implicitly does addition and subtraction. 
So on the green wire, we've got the remainder of what needs to be put into the train. Anything greater than zero output, anything input count, or I could just say anything not equal to zero. Um, this will work for negatives as well. But when we go condition anything, output anything, it just picks one signal uh, sort of arbitrarily. There's a specific order that the signals come out in, but as far as we're concerned, uh, most of the time that doesn't matter. So this is just filtering out one signal at a time, and then we're sending that straight to the filter inserter. That signal times one output S for stack size, and the S is decreasing with the number of items that remain to be put into the train. So that's our precise loading uh, station. And to do it with larger trains, uh, maybe I should do a demo of that before we finish. I can't think of much else to add to this little tutorial for now. Uh, if we're loading different things into trains from the same station, the reason that we need, the, the, the most important reason that we need all of this circuitry is to make sure the inserter doesn't try to over insert into the train. Uh, if there's only seven, if there's only room for seven more items and it tries to put in eight, it's going to be holding on to one last logistic bot. Um, and we've seen this, this happens all the time in our regular stations. Uh, the inserter is just sticking out indefinitely with copper plate, for example. If a train were to come to this station looking for something other than copper plate, the first thing that's going to happen is it gets a gift of copper plate that is not necessarily helpful. Um, so what I'm going to do here is... I'll start with an easier version, and then we'll do a slightly harder version. Let's make this, like, symmetrical. How will LTN schedule a train to pick up more than one type of stuff? Uh, well, it's doing it right here. Um, we've got an aggregate passive provider chest, which just means an everything chest. Uh, it's got one stack of everything in it, and I'm multiplying that by five to tell LTN that there's five stacks of everything available at this station. Um, so this schedule right here includes almost five stacks of construction bots and almost five stacks of logistic bots. Uh, you could do something similar with like high throughput items, but so far I haven't seen a reason to do that. Um, all of my multi-providers, let's do this. So this chest c contains the equivalent of a steel chest of iron plate and copper plate at the same time. Um, but at this station I am going to set the request threshold. We're going to go request stack threshold. There's 40... Um, I, I, most of the time I prefer to use this. There's 40 stacks in a cargo wagon. So if we set that to 160, and we only allow long trains uh, with four cargo wagons to come here, then a train will only be scheduled to come here if it's picking up a full load. Uh, now we've got... Uh, I've trimmed it down to five chests for each cargo wagon. The reason I've done that is... Well, there's a couple of ways you can go about it. Um, we know that the stack size for iron plate is 100. So if I set... Uh, filter inserter, actually. If I set the stack size of these to 10... 
uh, theoretically, we should never have a problem with the inserters sticking out at the end. And I'm just going to connect that directly to the logistic train stop output. And we're going to set filters whitelist. Simple as that. If I have four chests or five chests per cargo wagon, uh, because stack size 10, that will divide evenly into the number of inventory slots available in the cargo wagon. We should get... Uh, we should never get the inserters sticking out after the train has been here. So let's empty this as well. So here we're going to let LTN know what's in this station. And it's scheduled a delivery for copper plate and nothing else. So now we are swinging in exactly 50 copper plate per swing. And we should have no issue. If we ensure that the resources in these chests are balanced, uh, either perfectly balanced or pretty balanced, but we set the provide stack threshold even higher to make sure that none of the inserters are going to stop swinging at the wrong time. Uh, that's not going to actually cause any problems. And we can demonstrate that that's not going to get stuck. I think it I was going to say it looks like it got stuck. I think it was just traffic a minute ago. Yeah, like right here. Because I haven't signaled this properly. Let's add some signals down here. Never actually used that station. Alright, so we can see that's working. If we want to get a little bit more clever, let's just let this fill up. Actually, let's not. Um, we can go for, let's say, 24 or 48 chests. Let's go for 24. So we're going to read the contents of all of these chests. And once we let LTN know what's there, we're going to get a delivery scheduled again. Uh, since we have a number that won't divide evenly into, uh, into the size of the cargo wagons, we're going to have to do something a little bit different here. So first of all, just like down here, I'm removing the excess signals from the logistic train stop output. Arthi, thank you for the follow. You're welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. The next thing I do is to subtract what is already in the train from... Uh, let's get rid of this, it's a distraction. We're going to subtract what's already in the train from uh, what the train is asking for. Each times negative one, output each. And then because we have 24 inserters or chests, we're going to say each divided by 24, output each. But we're also going to need to set the stack size. So it's going to be the exact same sum, except output S. That is going to go to all of these inserters. And I'll put that on the red wire just because that's what I 
usually do. And these are going to be set filters and then also set stack size S. Oops. And I'm just going to throw in a little extra wire here right now. It's a surprise tool that will help us later. I'm just connecting that to one uh, inserter for each cargo wagon. So once again we're going to tell our train that this stuff is available for pickup. It's going to come... oh. Uh, that could be a problem. Yeah, that is a problem. <laughs> Uh, it was supposed to only pick up one type of resource at a time. Oh, I think I know what I have to do here. Uh, request threshold 16,000. Or, if you like, request stack threshold 160. I'm just going to send that back to the depot. Actually, I forgot the depot here doesn't have uh, doesn't have the chests to empty it not like that Okay. How will LTN schedule a train to pick up... Oh, right, yes, yes, yes. Uh, can we speed this up a bit? Actually, you know what, let me just make another train. Whoops. Let's not do it like that. And you know what, I should just give this the fuel that we normally do. Nuclear fuel. Yikes. And solid rocket fuel. There it is. to think of it, I need to do that up here as well. Got our nuclear fuel in this end. There we go. Alright, go to... wait, let's not get hit by a train. We'll probably survive with our OP broken shield here, but... wait, what? Shield hit points, 1 million out of 1 E plus 06. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll be okay. Go to the depot, please. Alright, so the next train scheduled to come here... ...should be picking up only iron plate, for example. Oh, it's... wait. Oh, this works. Wait, no it doesn't. What's going on? Why are these out of sync? Uh, they should definitely be in sync. How did this happen? Why, why do we have 4 and 2 and 4 and 2 and 4 and 2 with the inserters slightly off time? Uh, well... I, I'm I'm very confused right now. Okay, these are in time. So you can see the stack size uh, dropping down as we get closer to filling the train. And then what's going to happen when we are almost finished 
is the stack size is... Oh, I see what happened. Wait, or do I? No, this is what I was expecting the first time. I actually have no idea how that other train got over here with 16,000 copper. So, because we have uh, a number that doesn't evenly divide into the 40 stacks, we've ended up with a little bit left over. We need another 4 iron plate added to each cargo wagon. So, there's a couple of ways we could go about this, but because it's literally just 4 swings, uh, all I'm going to do here is instead of divided by 24, we're going to get a decider combinator that's going to say each less than 24. So if, since the input signal is 16 iron plate, uh, divided by 24 actually gives us a result of zero because there's no decimals, we can get uh, the remainder of that with the modulus operator, but I'm not going to bother with that this time. We're just going to output each uh, if each thing that's less than 24 we're going to output. And it doesn't actually matter if we give this a 1 or input count. Because what we're going to link this to is the 4 inserters, uh, 1 per cargo wagon. And the default stack size, whenever we give a control signal for stack size and we like neglect to give that signal or if it's negative uh, the stack size is going to be set to one so we're just going to connect that here what the oh it was the 120 seconds wasn't it yeah i i am not a fan of that setting uh we should get the same thing happening with copper here if two of the same name stations are open, how does it choose in vanilla? It just goes to the nearest one. Okay, so now we've got 16 copper plate left to be put into the train. And once we connect that, we get four swings of one copper each from these last few inserters. If you want to add, like, a, one more combinator to this, you could do each divided by four. It, you could... I think it's three more combinators, actually. You'd need each remainder 24. Uh, output each. And then... I wonder if that would work, actually. I'm curious. Let's try it. I'm just curious as to... Oh, that would also work. Actually, let's be a little brave here. If we add S for stack size to just the remainder, just for those four inserters, I bet it's going to work out in the end. Um... Not this time, because we're a bit too late. But the stack size for this one, this one, this one, and this one are going to be slightly higher some of the time, towards the end. I think that's how that's going to work. Are you planning to retrofit your bases for LTN? Uh, I've... I mean, I've been using LTN for the whole space exploration playthrough, uh, if that's what you mean. This is, that was actually my first playthrough with LTN, so I've learned all of this relatively recently, although it's been a long series. So the stack size on this one is going to be a little bit higher than the stack size on the rest of that. That didn't work. Okay, good to know. What we're going to do instead is... Uh, each divided by 24 output, what well, remained to 24, output each. Actually, I'm surprised that didn't work. Uh, 
Oh, it should have been uh, remainder four, I think. Yeah, that might actually work. So we've got divided by 24 stack size, remainder four stack size. But we'll probably also have to um, give it the signal type for the filter as well. Oh, no, it's divided by four. And is that... Yeah, that that's 16k. So that's like one extra combinator to save literally one swing at the end. Compared to the easier design where we just go each less than 24 output each. And let it have a stack size of one. My bad, no worries. Kappa Beast, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'm not smart enough to make a precise loader, so I just use the X signal to make sure the train has room. Oh yeah, the X signal. Uh, where do we get that from? I've seen that. Uh, I've never actually used it before. Locked slots per wagon. But doesn't that... Oh, this does stick out at the end, actually. Never mind. Yeah, all the more reason to go with this easier version. Each less than 24 output each. And it's just going to have a stack size of 1 to, f to do the last few swings. I can send you the blueprint on Discord if you want to show that, sure. By all means. Yeah, I've never actually noticed... Uh... So is that only if we manually put in... I, I thought this was only if we like manually determine some locked slots. I didn't know you could do that dynamically. Or can it figure out how many... Do these count as locked slots? That would be interesting. Not Steel Mage. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also JP. Welcome, welcome. Arthi. Tasman. Don't know if I said so earlier. Automatically locks a slot in each train. You will see on the demands in the train schedule. I'm so confused. Uh, do you have any questions in particular? I realize it's a lot of information to take in at once. Just learning, no worries. Yeah, we did start with the basics uh, for this stream, so if you have a look at the VOD, uh, take your time with that. Hopefully it's clear enough. Um, I guess one more thing I could demonstrate. I'll do it here. If we have a robot network, um, we can actually, we can actually make everything in the robot network available to LTN. So we are going to, first of all, connect the robo port with read logistic network contents to the logistic train stop input. Uh, that... That is reading all of this stuff. I guess that works as well. I'll just duplicate this uh, 
aggregate passive provider chest a few times. So what we're going to do here is read from, I guess, the exact same filters that would go on the stack filter inserter. Yeah, we can just copy this green wire onto the chest, and we're going to say set requests, request from buffer chests, and then we're going to have a filter inserter, just a regular one because it's got more slots for filters um, than our stack filter inserter. We're going to set filters blacklist. So up to five items at a time, everything that's supposed to be in this requester chest is not going to be removed uh, by this filter inserter, except actually I need to not connect it here, but connect it here, because this combinator right here uh, is specifically to just isolate one signal. And then I will copy these chests a few times, so there's like seven of them. We've got seven stacks of everything available in the logistic network. That's what this green wire is telling LTN. Uh, once the train gets here... Actually, let me just... Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, let me remove the super logistic box. And we'll make it a little bit clearer what's happening here. Uh, also... Worker robot speed. Let's slow it down a little bit. I need to cheat to do that, I think. No, I need to go to the editor and then bring up the research queue. Robot speed, let's say seven. That's weird. Worker, robot, speed, 16. Speed, 8. That'll do. So that, that'll be slow enough that we can see what's happening. And I'll put some regular bots into the logistic network. Are we still requesting this? Yeah. So here comes our train. It's looking for 247 and 243 bots. The moment it gets here, we get these requests set on the chest. Um, wow, okay. I must have missed... I must have missed some of the cheat logistic bots because that was way too fast. Let's try that again, shall we? The schedule will be less than a full train. It will still fill the train depending on the station setup and LTN settings. In before LTN absolute basics for our video, indeed. Kappa Beast, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. After you set how many slots... Automatically locks a slot after you set how many slots you want locked. Okay. If you request iron plates on a four wagon train, your demand will be 16,000, but if you set slots to locked with the signal, ultimate and automatically it reduces the request. Okay. So you actually feed it the locked slots per wagon. All right, here we go. So train gets here. Uh, it reads the bots that we're asking for from the logistic train stop output. We set requests. The bots bring them. We precisely load the correct amount of bots into the train. And the moment that we, the moment that one of these gets to zero, uh, our set filters blacklist 
on the filter inserter here is going to get any excess back into the logistic network by putting it in an active provider chest. This is a little, little bit slower than I had in mind, but at least we can clearly see what's happening. And there it is. Bots back into the logistic network. Let's give it a few more bots. And there we go. Exactly 247 and 243. Could you be persuaded to do a basics of rail grids? Seems like I need to know that to really get value from LTN. Uh, sure, I suppose. Uh, I can certainly explain how this one works. Uh, there is one last thing I want to cover before we finish on the LTN topic. Uh, and that is the mod settings. Uh, and the reason that I change them. And regardless of your preferences, I strongly recommend looking over them. So... With the default mod settings, if you make certain assumptions that I think are quite reasonable uh, as a newbie, especially like just throwing things together, trying to get them to work, you're going to run into some trouble. For example, the default request and provide threshold is only 1000. At the same time, there is a checkbox that says finish loading that is switched on. It prevents trains from leaving while inserters or pumps are still working by adding two seconds of inactivity. So uh, I actually demonstrated this before. If a train looks for a thousand iron plate, it'll come and pick up 16,000 if that's available. And then it'll deliver 16,000 to a station that was only requesting 1,000. Uh, also, the 120 second stop timeout, I re recommend just removing that entirely. Uh, it's better to have a train just get stuck at a station as opposed to eventually leaving the station uh, without what it asked for or trying to drop something off at a station, there's no room and it eventually goes back to the depot uh, with resources still in the train. Uh, it also, it, 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 it makes it harder to find where the problem was on top of causing other issues. Uh, personally, I like to set the provide and request thresholds extremely high so that they effectively don't exist. So that I have to manually put in as signals uh, what request or provide thresholds I want to have. Uh, delivery timeout, I also set as high as possible. I think the absolute highest number was this. Yeah, uh, 36,000 seconds. What this does is, if a train gets stuck somewhere because it can't find a path or something, uh, LTN will just assume that that train is gone forever, after only 10 minutes. And even if you have a train limit set to one on a station, it'll it'll send another train every 10 minutes to try and fill that request. That can obvious, obviously cause some issues. Uh, what else? I didn't get to network IDs, but uh, I think this will do. This is probably more than enough information for kind of a basics of LTN. Uh, I think that is just about everything that I strongly recommend changing or at least looking over so that you understand the settings. Otherwise you run into certain traps. Like uh, with those default settings it kind of seems to me like they want you to be circuit controlling what you put in a train, but if you're circuit controlling what you're putting in a train, you're probably not using the default settings at that point. Basics are pretty easy, chain signal before intersections, rail signal after, 
chain signals on both sides of a crossover, then you can do whatever you want. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, it's pretty easy to... Once you get it, it, it's actually kind of easy. So I'm going to add another one of these blocks here. And we're going to make a deconstruction planner. We're going to remove all of the signals. Um, the way my rail grid works is the trains are allowed to go both ways on the roundabouts. Um, but on the straight rails, they're only allowed to go left-hand drive. Um, that way, coming off the roundabouts, we can very easily have a station with minimum fuss and space. Uh, but regardless, the, the point... The thing to do when you're making an intersection is basically just cut it up into as many... Let's say we're just going left-hand drive. Uh, cut it up into as many, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, sectors as may be appropriate. And the train pathing system will figure out the rest, basically. So a train is not allowed to go into another sector that has another train in it. And with chain signals... Uh, with chain signals, trains are not allowed to go into the intersection unless it can get out of the intersection. Uh, it's not allowed to stop, basically. That's what a chain signal says. And it actually gets relatively simple uh, to signal things. If you just say put chain signals everywhere and then the exception to that rule is I want a train to be allowed to stop here. So if I get a regular signal I'm going to put that one here. The block in front of the rail signal, the regular rail signal, is where a train is allowed to stop. Everywhere else in this block, uh, apart from here and here, we don't want a train stopping. And something that I only came across this playthrough, uh, if you have a train stop somewhere, let's say we add one here, uh, you don't actually have to bother with the regular rail signals for this. If you put a chain signal here, trains that are coming in to stop at this station will still be allowed to stop here, but any other train, uh, if th they'll typically avoid going through a station anyway, but if another train had to come through here, uh, it's not going to consider this sector as being somewhere that it's allowed to stop. No worries. Chain signals simply repeat the signal further up the track. Blue if there's an intersection ahead with one available route. Red if there is a train ahead. Yes. But in terms of what you actually need to understand, um, it really does ultimately... Like, there's a lot of information that you can absorb about this, and it's all true. But especially if you're just trying to understand it so you can make it work. Uh, it's easy to overcomplicate it. All you actually need to understand is break it up into sectors and use a chain signal. Well, use chain signals almost everywhere, honestly. Uh, wherever a train is allowed to stop in the next block... Oh, that was wrong. Wherever, wherever a train is allowed to stop in the next block, use a rail signal. Everywhere else, use a chain signal. And you don't have to use a rail signal to make a station work. How do you decide how, do you decide how large to make the blocks? 
Um, I designed this one to fit these trains specifically. So we can fit one train here, one train here, very, very comfortably. Uh, and that same train fits... Uh, let's get rid of that. That same train just barely fits in uh, this space. Although, I was thinking about uh, maybe using this block again, but redesigning it a bit in future. Um, let me just delete some of this. Actually, delete all of it. Put another one down. I was thinking maybe I could cut down on the amount of space that's required for these crisscross things. And also, now that I understand signals better, uh, it might be okay to allow the trains to go both ways on the straight tracks. Uh, as long as we only allow them to go one way in particular when it comes to stopping. So, but I'll get rid of the signals first. Because the first thing I was curious about is, can I make this part a bit cleaner, a bit smaller? I suspect there's not going to be room for the signals if I do it like this. Um, but let's try. So if we're going to allow the trains to go either ways on the streets, let's solve that problem second. Let's assume for now that the trains are only going to go left-hand drive on the streets. Do we have room here? I don't think we do. I can't put a signal on this side for some reason. It looks like there should be room. Well, if it's if it's left hand only, maybe that's not actually a problem. Quad awesome. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, round, clockwise, anti-clockwise. Uh, should I just rotate that? See how that looks. We need to break up these bits. Maybe? So, let's say the train wants to come to a stop here. Uh, it would go... This way. In here, and then leave... Yeah, I think that would work. We would have to stick to only... The trains only being able to be... To go one way on the straights. Because there isn't room to allow it to come out this way and leave on the right hand. Oh, wait. No, there might be. All of a sudden we can put signals there. So let's say a train is approaching right-hand drive. We, we're going to need a lot of signals to make it work this way. 
It's allowed to go this way. Uh, we need it to go here, actually. So it would go like this. Yeah, I think that would work. So we could, uh, if we really want to, cut it down so that our long train... Uh, we could reduce the length of this part by a bit, but then I think if we did... Well, let's find out. Remove this for now. Be gone straight rail. Actually, that's going to be easier if I just do this part manually. That is way too fast. Okay. If we were to have the minimum length here to fit one of our long trains, and we put this here, okay, not quite there. Like so. We can just barely fit that train in there, but I don't think I would do that because also I missed an extra signal. I don't think I would probably do that because then we could only fit uh, we could only fit one long train in like this. We could just have one block here and allow, like, a train stop here and signal that. A train stop here and a train stop here. Except that's going to be a bit awkward with the unloading. And also, these two trains would not be able to unload at the same time. So I don't think I would make it that much smaller because of this. Um, but I think maybe on the next playthrough, uh, this might be this might be what I go for for our intersections have the crisscross bits sticking out that much less. The track looks weird. Hey, Immo, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. If they went both ways on the straights, you'd have a lot of cases where the directions alternate and trains are stuck queuing when you have almost empty rails. Yeah, I did run into that uh, when I tried allowing them to go both, both ways on the straights. Um, but I think... I think if we have it so that for left-hand drive, for example, we have rail signal, so the trains are allowed to stop going this way. But on if they're coming back this way, they're not allowed to stop in this block. Uh, I think it might work. It's an experiment that I want to try. So basically, you could think of the opposite lane as the overtaking lane. That's the idea anyway. Okay, uh, any questions for the LTN stuff before we move on? You'd have the same issue to a lesser extent. I don't know if it would cause any, uh, traffic jams in the rail blocks, but if we had a highway like that, I'm curious to see whether it would cause a problem or not. Thanks for the explanations, you're welcome. Alright, let's, uh, let's finish up there then. Make a note 
of how long we've been going. Uh, one hour 53. Maybe I will try to edit it down a little bit. Maybe not. You can always speed it up, right? Anyway, uh, I might save that as well. Just so we can easily come back with some examples. On to space exploration. Where we've got our Naquium flowing much faster now. You won't get permanent traffic jams, but you'd have way less trains on the rails at the same time. Less trains on the rails at the same time. That sounds good, probably. Alright, let me update the title here. Space Exploration Part 168. And here we are. New tips, rate calculator. Fantastic. All right, cool. So we've been spamming, uh, we've been spamming antimatter ships to bring us back Naquatite, and we finally got to the point where we actually had to build a new block or two to deal with that throughput. It basically optimizes for latency as opposed to throughput. Interesting. If we have if we have depots uh, distributed around evenly enough, that might actually be really, really good. really low latency, uh, really responsive trains. And they don't, and, and they generally have shorter trips. Single direction tracks should have higher capacity slash speed than multi-directional. We'll see. Uh, so what should we do right now? I'm basically, I've basically just been spamming more ships uh, and a new Naquatite mine so that we can get this stuff faster, so that we can get the science. I don't know how quickly we're really going to be getting... Well, we can actually measure that. We haven't been going this fast for long, but... Aquium... Uh, neck. It's not spelt the way I thought it was. U-I-U-M. Anyway, it's ingot and plate that I'm interested in. That has been climbing. Naturally, the ingot bar... Uh, the ingot graph kind of follows the plate bar, uh, graph. That is a significant increase in the last half an hour. So we're up to uh, about 330 ingots per minute. 330 plate per minute. Uh, how much has been consumed? 50 ingots per minute. So call it like 270 and 296 or 280 or something. Uh, that's not too, too bad. How close are we to launching this? Uh, we need 7,600, and we've got 6,400. So, 1,200 over 
what was it, like 780? Uh, this sh thing should be ready to launch in a couple of minutes, actually. If I didn't horrendously butcher that calculation. Very, very nice. If you assume a randomized production block distribution like grids tend to end up as... Yeah, I do put some thought into the placement of... Uh, of item uh, of blocks in the grid when I can. Like, where possible, we've got stuff that consumes a lot of plate is next to smelters. Or, like, up here we've got some heavy consumers of petroleum right next to a bunch of oil blocks. Uh, but there's only so far you can really go with that. Also, sulfur, for that matter. Alright. I guess we could look at LTN Manager as well. No. We um, requested a lot. And nothing provided. I guess it doesn't show it as provided until it reaches the provide threshold. We've got almost 300 of each here. Uh, about 1.8k here. Uh, I think it's like... Uh, it's only 1600 to pick up a load of... Yeah, there's a train on the way to pick up Naquium ingots. Would you say that your Omni Smelter blueprint is up to date? Uh, the one I posted, I don't remember how long ago I posted it, but basically, yes. Uh, unless I, unless I didn't post a new version after adding this stuff, um, I kind of simplified, sort of, uh, the loading stations from the Omni Smelters. We've just got static requests. And then... Okay, it's a little bit complicated, but the basics of it is pretty straightforward. Um, we need to pretend we've got different amounts for some of these because of the stack sizes. Uh, I don't remember exactly why. Ride stack threshold 190. That's to make sure we've got a bit extra of everything because we have to make sure it's sufficiently balanced and the bots won't put it in perfectly equally. Um, each chest is requesting the same stuff. Four stacks of iron plate, almost. Four copper, four steel. Four, four, five. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, basically we're doing static requests, 48 chests, uh, high stack, pr high provide stack threshold, uh, and then we have some precise loaders. Hey, hey, El Pancho. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Do we get that plate delivered? I mean, ingots? Nope, it's on its way. Maybe I should have put that block closer to this one, but... Well, actually, yes, maybe I should have. I could move it over here if we really need to. I don't think Naquium throughput is ever going to get so high that that's going to be uh, much of an issue. How is our production of tier 6 modules? Oh no. Uh, nothing for the last three hours? Probably because processing units were crashed for the last three hours. 
think we got a handle on that, though. Nope. Uh, I think we're out of plastic again. Holmium cable. It's actually Holmium plate. I think we may actually need another one of these blocks making the powder. Because uh, I'm pretty sure we have no shortage of Holmanite. How many productivity modules does this need to work properly? 456. But I only have seven. Uh, make that 14. Zero here. And zero here. So we need Holmium plate um, to make Holmium cable, to make blue circuits, to make productivity modules. Uh, but I need productivity modules to make the most of the new build. But we'll just have to give it tier 3 modules to start with. And I'll lower the priority. Where are our construction spiders? All the way over here. Let's send them back to the mole first. Um, how much water does this one consume? The order of my buttons is all over the place again. Rate calculator... How do I... There we go. I want that, like, top left. Calculator can go underneath that. Okay. Uh, Omni smelters more UPS friendly? Uh, as opposed to, like, regular smelters? I don't think so. But it depends... It... Hmm. I suppose it depends on how many extra smelters you need and how well balanced you can keep everything. Like, if, you, if you're designing a mega base, like the entire thing, on paper before you actually build, so that you've got, like, exact ratios of everything you need all the way down, and you never have idle, uh, idle smelters, then there's really no reason uh, to make an Omni smelter. But if the game is, if you're doing it more like I am, where it's like, oh, we actually need more smelters now, uh, then I find it very convenient to have Omni smelters. 700 water per second, that's not that much. I would still like to build it close to water, if we can. Uh, Holmium. Holmium we get from here. Why don't we build it here? I might have to landfill at least a little bit. Okay, more than a little bit. Not that much, actually. Save the fishies. And a little bit of landfill for the roundabout. It's probably enough, maybe. My spider left without me, didn't it? Thanks again, no worries. Just check the production graph so you can get an idea of how many powder makers your mines can supply. Uh, well, we're, we're oversaturated on Holmium itself. Uh, that Lots of that is going to the trash here so that we can keep the core fragment processing going and get vanilla core fragments and stone out of it. Uh, if we look at the input for the Holmium powder, we've got lots and lots of Holmanite here. Uh, this is like six train loads or so. Five or six train loads. So the fact that it's accumulated that much tells me 
this is our bottleneck right now. The fact that we've only got one block like this. Uh, it may or may not be because I didn't prioritize plastic here for a while. And we got somewhat of a shortage of plastic. Because we weren't making Holmium powder because we didn't bring plastic here. We weren't getting blue circuits. And because we weren't getting blue circuits, we weren't getting modules. Uh, it may be the case that this will eventually catch up without me adding anything, but it's going to take a while, if that is correct. Um, and I would rather make sure we have a bit more than we need. The production or consumption graph can tell how oversaturated it is. Omium powder. Oh, there's a huge dip here. That was half an hour ago. And more to the point, it flatlined. It's been flat for a long time. Uh, I wish I could pan the graph back this way so that I could see consumption like from here to here. Like get a average over that. But yeah, we're, we're definitely consuming more hol holmium powder than we're making. If I look at 50 hours, it's exactly the same. The fact that it's... Ever, no matter where I look for the graph duration, it's either using up 100% of what we're producing. Last 10 minutes... The thing is, it's a bit spiky because of the train network. Last hour, we've consumed 7.7k per minute and produced 7.5, 7.4k per minute. Yeah, I, I think it's probably worth... I spied it. Oh, I fell for it again, didn't I? Thinking it might need more than one extra block. Uh, if, pos uh, if that's true, we'll just make another one. But I don't think that's terribly likely this time. Let's bring our spiders into it. And this time I actually will remember to get in the giant robot. Fantastic. Also, if I didn't say so, Regatharian, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hey, hey, we got a delivery done. Nice. Can we see some of this stuff in motion? We can. Naquium structural data. I think that was like the only thing that was missing somewhere. It is, actually. Uh, let's have a look. We've got, of course, lots and lots of interstellar void probe data. Uh, it's only the energy data and structural data that actually needs the Naquium, I think. So it's easy to produce the other two way more than this stuff. Um, Naquium energy data is the one that requires a ludicrous amount of ion stream. Uh, why do we not have ion canisters? Because we don't have canisters. We don't have secure canisters because we don't have plastic. Ah, uh, always with the plastic. Okay. Plastic is almost becoming the new blank data cards. Uh, 
Hello, Tenos. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Has anyone... Or two on starting Factorio with different mod directory? Steam version of Factorio with different mod directory. Uh, I actually use the standalone version of Factorio. But I might be thinking of another game, but it might be possible to take... Uh, take Factorio from your Steam folder and just copy it somewhere and run it. That might have been another game that lets you do it DRM-free like that. Maybe someone else can chime in on that. We're probably already empty over here without ingots. Yeah, I think that's already slightly less than a train load, so it won't pick it up. And it's plate that makes the aquium cubes. Okay. We've already got plenty of plate here, right? Oh yeah. Maybe a bit too much, honestly. How much did I request here? Well, it's done now. Here's our spiders. Uh, I guess I should fill this part in as well. And let's copy our Holmanite build. Gonna make this one a lower priority because we've got less good productivity modules. I'll still have a high priority for plastic drop off though. I, I think I'll drop the priority on this one by like one by comparison. So it's still super high priority for the plastic, but if it comes down to... Plastic throughput with these two is quite slow, so I don't think it's going to come down to that. But it would prioritize the other one over this one when it comes to plastic. Still didn't place that landfill. I think I have to hold shift. Why have we not placed that? Constant combinator yet. I need to update it. Uh, priority normal. That should be fine. Cool. And we'll fill these with tier 3 modules. Except for the beacons, they can stay. Uh, productivity modules are the things that we need the most of. So that's what we're always short on. Wait, what? Uh, pulverizer, chemical plant, chemical plant. Chemical plant, tier 3. Okay. And pulverizer, tier 3. I think I just had to click the tick button there. Not the beak. Actually, let me remove the beacons from this temporarily. That'll make it easy. Uh, or not?
it'll be more effort than it's worth if I accidentally update the beacons. So let's do that. And then once they've actually all got their modules, we're just going to run an upgrade planner over this for tier sixes. Actually, come to think of it, maybe I shouldn't do that. Because when we had a million deconstruction planners, for example, um, it would make the bots a lot less responsive. I do have some... I had like three productivity modules on me. Where did they go? Don't tell me one of these spiders took them. Probably the modules got put into some of the machines at first. Let's see. Tier 6 modules. And go. There it goes. That's fine. Alright, I'm actually going to remove all of the module requests. Uh, with that in mind. There's quite a lot of them. I don't know if it's catching all of the ones that are in the fog of war as well. But yeah, not having hundreds of those might make the bots that little bit more responsive. Maybe it even affects UPS. Um, I did want to add... Is this one of the blocks where water gets output? It is... No, that's an input. Water input... Okay, so it doesn't matter if the water is totally saturated here. In fact, we can just connect it over this way. That'll be super convenient. Let's get a little underground. Some offshore pump. And that should all be covered by the pylon substation. And we did make just enough room for our roundabout. Actually, uh, I think we're probably missing some signals there. I want to give a try at SE but without losing all my current mods. Uh, so you want like a backup of Factorio to try it with? Oh. Did we get our pump? We did. Fantastic. What's missing? Uh, electric boiler. Wait. Oh yeah, because we need steam. It's not good because we're getting rid of water, specifically. And away we go. Fantastic. And there it is. Let's add our tag here. Get the spiders out of the way first. Uh, holmium powder is being made here. 
I'm just going to rescue that bot myself. If you put landfill under your rail blueprints, you'll have a much easier time placing them? I suppose so. Uh, Vantus, thank you for the follow. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And I think I said thank you, Quad Awesome, for the follow, but for some reason I had to scroll the activity field, field? feed just now, so I'd rather be sure. Why do we have no rail here? Surely the spiders didn't run out of rail. It's possible, I suppose. No, it shouldn't be possible. What is the snow mod? It's built into, or it's part of the package for um, space exploration. It's called uh, Alien Biomes. I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay, so where are we now? How soon until we deliver plate? Uh, it still looks exactly the same, actually. That's weird. It should be delivering at the same rate, or like half of the ingots. We're keeping them exactly equal, even though the plate... Well, one ingot makes four plate without productivity modules, and the stack size is double. I think I should probably do what I did last time. Add a arithmetic combinator here, so that we pretend there's twice as much uh, ingot as far as that calculation is concerned. So we go equal stacks, basically. Oh, I guess the bots are taking my trash. It's moments like this that I'm glad, as a standard, I make uh, a trash station that picks up anything that's not supposed to be in this block. Actually, let's go this way. On a subsequent playthrough, I would definitely go to more trouble to, if at all possible, skip certain technologies, just because we've built so much stuff that runs on things that I would like to replace. But I'm quite happy with, like, what I produced here with the tools I had at the time. This is pretty close, uh, apart from the fact that I should have done, like, one ion engine for this, or, like, six condenser turbines, because this these things seriously bottleneck on power. Um, but doing a redesign for a future playthrough, uh, it's not that different from this, really. It still has to use nuclear reactor, a handful of condenser turbines, and ion engines. For the longest time to go interstellar. Alright, so what's the most succinct way to solve this? Uh, I think I know it already, actually. We're just gonna go arithmetic combinator. In fact, I can put it almost anywhere, but I'll put it here. Get rid of this connection for now. And
That's not going to affect... No, I have to just not connect it to the output of this one. That's fine. Alright, so we've got... I'll, I'll make it a bit easier to see until I change this for the aesthetic. So we've got the green wire going directly from the chests to these inserters. We're going to go ingots times one, output ingots. And we're going to add that... Whoops. Okay, that works, I guess. Uh, we're going to add that to all of these inserters. So just on the red wire, we've got another copy of the signal for uh, Nequim ingots. So that these inserters think there's twice as many when it makes this decision. So that we're effectively going by the stack size rather than the actual count. And just for the look of it, I'm going to move that over here. And then remove this wire. Copy this across. And we will have to physically place the combinator, of course. Or importantly, why don't you have some rails on you? I think I carry 100, but certainly not enough to build a block like that. Alright, so we should be seeing plate come through much faster now. Once we work through this backlog, it's going to be a little bit slower than it is right now. Um, but that's fine. So how soon until we get a delivery here? Uh, we've got 12 out of 15k. Doesn't it take 3200 for a delivery? We've got 2.4k here. Uh, 1.8k here. Something's not in motion. We don't have Vitalic Acid. Uh-oh. Uh, are we able to keep up? Let's just look at these two blocks for now. For Vitalic Acid, we need 80 per second. And our current build... Uh, doesn't have any Vitamelange Extract. Okay. How much are we requesting? 32k, that's four train loads. So it's definitely not... Um, whoops. We should definitely be allowing more trains to be scheduled here at the same time. But I suspect... Well, how, how fast would this be, first of all? Uh, if we ignore... The bio scrubbers, because I don't think we use those all that often. We can do 90 per second here. So I think we can probably just about keep up. Uh, what about... Uh, Vitamelange Extract seems to be... Did we have a dip for this one? Seems to be getting made pretty fast. There's lots of it here. Bit of melange extra. Okay, I think. I think it was actually possibly just that we didn't set the train limit high enough for Vita Melange extract over here. 
I also didn't name this station, so I have no idea uh, which train is coming to pick this up. So, how fast do we consume the extract? 140 per second. At a stack size of 50. Um... That is, we need a delivery more than one per minute, and we had a train limit of one, and most of, all of our extract actually is down here now, I think. So, there's your problem. Of course, it took a minute to notice, because uh, our consumption of vol uh, vitalic acid has been pretty slow up until now, by comparison. Also, we've only got Prod 3s on these anyway. We may as well copy it, just to be sure. What goes into this? Sulfuric Acid, uh, Vitalic Extract, Steel, and Glass. The glass is kind of slow. And the steel is really slow. Okay. I think it might be a good idea to build a copy of this block right about here. Get rid of the old power poles that we copied. And let's grab our construction spiders. Bring them over this way. That should be more than enough to get that one done. What's going on here? Uh, cool. This thing's not taking off because it's not getting rid of its Naquitite. And I'm pretty sure... I was going to say I'm pretty sure that's the only reason, but we're still pumping antimatter as well. Our target is 49,200. We've got... Oh, there it is. How many ships do we have? Stardust. I wonder how many, if any, are hovering over Nalvis right now. It seems we've got a few that aren't moving very fast. Oh, number nine we haven't got moving yet. We don't have any water, though. Uh, I thought we fixed that. This one's looking for water. And let me guess, we didn't connect this red wire. That would make sense, considering... The other problem was we didn't connect the green wire earlier. Okay. So it's already at 10,000 degrees. It's full of antimatter. Literally just needs a train load of water to get started. What about the others, though? Stardust number one looks a bit slow, actually. Is it overfilled with water? It is overfilled with water. I was expecting there to be a couple more of these, but... Wait, where are you? You're leaving now, Vis. I thought we fixed this. little bit more. 1.9k. Alright, it sounds like... Seems like it's working now. Accumulator charge is climbing. 
There should be enough space to cycle the water now. Stardust 2. Hello, Coffee Mastery. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Same problem. Just need to delete like a thousand water. And where where are you right now? Oh no, they're all stuck like this. Okay. Which one were we up to? Two? Three is at home. Four is fine. Five is overfilled with water. Judging from the fact that all of those engines immediately went on. Okay, never mind. And next one. Number six is having the same problem. Cool. Number seven is totally fine, actually. Number eight is looking a bit slow. I'm glad this is happening when we're actually bottlenecked on Vitalic Acid as opposed to Naquitide itself. Accumulated charge is climbing, that should be fine. Alright, let's check them all again. Oh, and I wanted to check number three that's on planet. How much water do you have? 24,800, it's still pumping. This one stopped. And this one has stopped. Target is 24,000. Target is 24,000. So how did we end up with 24,910 and climbing? Uh... Oh... Hmm... I think it's the amount of water that was stored in the high temp turbine generator and the condenser turbines. So normally, like, stopping a few hundred water short in this one container would be more than safe enough. But because this holds so much, 2,000 water. Okay, if this holds 2,000 and this can hold 100 each, I think. Um... It's currently got... Let's assume this can hold 200. Let's call it 2,500. Uh, over 4. We need like 625. I would have thought even with the pump sending a bit too much in, trying to stop at 24,000 would be more than enough space for the fluids to move around, but I guess not. Why don't we pump some of this out? It's not moving. Probably because of this. Oh! That would be another way that we could... If we do a loop, we could have water has to be less than some amount, water has to be more than some amount. And then the water that's in this thing can get output. And then we can actually get a more 
accurate number here for how much fluid we've actually got. Yeah, that's a good idea. Alright, so we're going to aim for between 23 and 24,000 water in this tank. In on the left, out on the right. I'm glad I happened to do this on both sides, or I don't think I would have thought of that. That's not vanilla, indeed. Cool. So that's going to stop at 24k, which is... Uh, should be way more than enough still. Like, we run out of antimatter fuel before we get super low on water. Uh, we're not getting heat here. That's a problem. Uh, what happened to... You're aimed at Nalvis Orbit. You're both aimed at the same spot at Nalvis Orbit. This one was supposed to be aimed at Nalvis. I think I just forgot. So now I need to check the temperature of all of our Stardust ships. See if they're getting dangerously low. 9.7k. 9.7k. Uh, this one's warming up. Six point seven, that's still pretty safe, I think. Nine point four. Nine point nine. Nine point nine. Nine point nine. And this one's hasn't set off yet, but it's at ten thousand. All right, cool. Let's send you to Stardust. Why not just sum up the tank contents? So you don't have the temporal effect of tanks equalizing, messing up the result. Um, I just happened to sort of standardize on reading one tank. I kind of, I kind of just prefer it. Also, we tend to read from the tank that's closest to the pump, although I actually like this loop system much better now that I came up with it. Because it actually gets the water that's in here uh, out of the high temp turbine generator, and that can be 2000 water, which throws everything off here. Not to mention a few hundred in the condenser turbines. So yeah, I like this a lot better. You could have an arithmetic combinator in the ship divide by the number of tanks to standardize the result. I don't like to add more combinators than is absolutely necessary. I mean, I love making circuits all over the place, don't get me wrong, um, and circuit network is up to seven in terms of the update time, but when I do make a circuit, um, I like to break it down to, not break it down, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Back, refactor it down to as few combinators as possible. What's going on here? Oh, you're kidding. The whole thing is busted because... We missed like three pieces of belt. And it's doing a balanced load. Okay. Shouldn't have trouble getting enough holmium after this. Uh... Now what? We're out of plastic. 
No. How much are we asking for here? Only one train load. Well, that's why. Uh, where's the new build? It's probably super unnecessary, the theoretically, to ask for like two train loads here. But I really, really, really don't want this build to stop. Uh, and it's like fairly low throughput anyway. It's low throughput and very important for plastic, so I would rather just have an extra storage there in case there's a really bad shortage for a while. Your circuit network is probably 99% just Omni smelters <laughs> and your balanced unloaders. Um, most of the balanced unloaders I use uh, combinate all this. And all they do is everything has to be equal to zero before they swing again. So given the kind of optimization that I would expect, uh, that shouldn't be too costly in terms of UPS. There we go. Uh, speaking of which... Oh yeah, this is... Wait, what? Oh, we're missing... Uh, we're missing an inserter here. Not to mention... Combinator, I believe? Yeah. What's our max rate? I don't need the Informatron shortcut down here. Or the star map, or the respawn, or the universe explorer. Or the nav set. Um, this is all good. Okay. Do I really not have a steel chest? Okay. And it went straight into my trash slots. There we go. Uh, what's our rate here? I was going to check because I was thinking of changing the balancer. 136 per second. Yeah, no, that should be fine. Hey there, t Hex and chat. How's it going? Raren, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good Sunday. Thank you. You too. Alright, so now it works. And we should have the plastic over here by now as well. Cool. How is our oil outpost looking. I'm thinking of doing something that I talked about yesterday with these oil outposts. Uh, if we can store three train loads of crude oil here, one, two, three, and a bit, three and a half. Uh, what I might do. This is one. This is one of the things that you can only do if you have a request threshold that's set so high that it effectively doesn't exist. I'm going to pretend there's less crude oil here. Sorry, no. There's more crude. Yeah, no, I guess the thing I said about request threshold doesn't matter this time. I'm going to pretend there's always 100,000 crude oil here. So... We could schedule up to four trains to come here to pick it up. But if there's actually no crude oil in the tanks, there should be one train coming here to pick up crude oil. Kind of like we often have in vanilla... Uh, unless we mess with the train limits. 
Just because the station is so remote. And I'm going to bump up the train limit for this one as well. So we can fit three and a half. One, two, three and a half. Let's do the same settings actually. So we can... We'll have like one train scheduled to pick this up all the time. And if we have extra crude oil, uh, we'll have more trains queuing to pick it up. One, two, three... Hmm. We might need some more signals on this one. If we don't want the trains getting in each other's way. Uh, it might happen though. So we would have one train queuing, two trains queuing. Third one would be here. It would be blocking this one. Okay. In that case, only two, only two trains queuing for this one. Let's head down there. We might need some more fluid wagons. I don't think we need more fluid wagons. Well, we, we might after we add... Uh, why is this station just called Fantastic? Well, that's fine, I suppose. I did add another fluid depot. Although I didn't really finish the clever circuitry that I was trying to make work here. I wanted the trains to be able to bring a random fluid back to the depot. And then for the depot to turn into a uh, provider station, basically. But we ran into some unexpected difficulties with that. I don't remember exactly what they were. Um, but for now, let's just add a few more. I guess I could put them down here. Oh, short trains. Forgot to activate those a while ago. We probably haven't needed them. I didn't see the the blue triangle flashing. But better to have more than we need. Alright, you are going to fluid depot. Isn't that what the old one is called? What is this called? Fluid, and then the depot icon. There it is. Actually, I want to just double check if I add no weight condition, that's going to sort itself out, right? Also, also, I want to copy the blue to this. Almost there. And, yep, it adds the five seconds of inactivity.
Oh. Uh, I guess, considering how quickly we fill up fluid wagons, that queuing isn't going to be much of an issue regardless. I'd still like to add a couple of signals here. Alright, let's head back. And what's missing over here? Some... Some stuff that is probably not relevant to this build. Oh, right. Actually, I was... I was power managing this? What's our accumulator charge at? Uh, yeah, I don't really think we need that these days. Since we've got, uh... Reactors that don't need any fuel. It's all just beamed power. This is what gets us through the night. Not really concerned about conserving power at all, as long as it doesn't crash. We need sulfuric acid still. We've got sulfuric acid. So what's the problem? There's one... There's a single pipe to ground missing. And like, two inserters. And a couple of pieces of pipe down here. Lazy spiders. There we go. Cool. So hopefully now we'll have no trouble keeping up with um, the Vitalic Acid that we need to run our Naquatite processing. Looking good. Okay, how close are we to launching the plate? We have launched the plate. Fantastic. That means we should be seeing... The train's already took it somewhere. Did we get any of this done? Oh, I forgot. We're waiting on secure canisters which we're waiting on plastic. Uh, it's still waiting on plastic, actually. Are we not sending plastic into space? Is there an issue with that? Oh, here it is. I don't think we're sending it via cargo rocket anymore, but I think I would have noticed a bit before now if we didn't have something sending plastic into space. Let's look over here. We don't have a shuttle sending plastic up. Here it is. Yeah, we just don't have that much plastic. Okay. Um, and plastic, no doubt, is still bottlenecked on petroleum. Uh, are we bottlenecked on crude oil still? It looks like we are. Even though... Even though we've got abundant crude oil down here... For example, it seems like we can't get crude oil into our refineries fast enough. It 
It's becoming a serious problem. Hmm. There's another crude oil patch here as well. Maybe... This is coal, that's fine. That's not blocking anything, is it? I don't think so. I've set it up so that there should always be a train coming. Even if this is empty, there should always be a train coming for the crude oil. And if there's more crude oil, there should be up to three trains and up to four trains scheduled to pick this stuff up. So I don't understand why every time I look, there's only like one train down here. More trains? Possibly. When I checked earlier, I did find idle fluid wagons. Like this one. Uh, let's make some more though. That seems off. There we go. Yeah, I find myself thinking, oh, I should go to the... I should go get more oil core fragments so that we can have enough petroleum. And then I look around and see there's actually there's actually train stations full of crude oil all over the place how many trains are allowed here three so there should be like okay this actually has a unique name there's only one train scheduled to come here and there's definitely more than 200k crude oil I think we do just need more trains, but then why do we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fluid wagons idle in the old fluid depot? I would really like to know. Oh, now it's moving. Hmm. Let's add some more. And you are going to... Uh, what am I doing? Fluid... Depot? Can I copy-paste it here? Doesn't look like it. Oh, come on. That is such a tease. Hey, Scale the Summit. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hello, hello. Alright, so you can go. You can go. You can go, you can go, you can go, you can go, and you can go. If that doesn't push us over the edge for having enough fluid trains, then perhaps this will.
Could it be network congestion? Um, I don't know. I could definitely add some rail coming down this way. It might help. Oh, I see one, two trains here now. That, That's an improvement. And I think that is... That's a cargo train, actually. How close is Nalvis to running out of resources? Uh, not close, but we have to go further and further to get them. To the point where it's like... Well, especially when you consider that core fragments are an infinite resource, I find it easier to just go set up an outpost compared to making a copper mine over and over and over again. But yeah, the further the trains have to go, the more issues like this we get as well. Okay. Um, this looks to be working. It'll be a little bit slower on... Huh. Wait, what? Did I miscalculate this? Metallic acid. 46.2 per second. That's barely more than a belt, but we've got like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 machines that seem to be idle most of the time. That doesn't seem right. Forty six point two. And if we remove two of these machines forty two point nine. Why is this Oh Metallic Acid greater than Bioscrubber? Huh. Um how fast does this consume? Only fourteen point per second. Do I really want this circuit control? Nah, especially since we've already got it on the other block. Bio scrubbers get consumed way less, I'm pretty sure. Oh, and I was going to remove this as well. Let's head over there. And construction spiders back to the mall. Can you use spaceships for long distance transportation on Nalvis? Yes, you can. Uh, it's just that every time it takes off, it has to it has to use enough fuel to go to orbit. So even with antimatter, that's going to be a bit excessive. Um, I think. How much antimatter does it take this thing to take off? Uh, eight thousand gigajoules. Oh no, that's how much it has. So it takes a bit over ten percent of. Eight spaceship antimatter booster tanks. 50k times eight. Yeah, it's like, uh. Hold on. 144th. 2.25%. Um. 
So 12.25% of 400k. Uh, I must have put a decimal wrong. I think. Four hundred thousand. Twelve point two five per cent. Point one one two five. One two two five. It can't be. It can't be like fifty K, that's a quarter. Forty nine thousand out of four hundred thousand. What? Does it cost less fuel if the ship is smaller? Yes. But I'm just thinking, what if we did as many tanks as possible? Uh, so, 8,000 gigajoules, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1,000 gigajoules per tank, uh, it's, um, 50,000 times 0.818, 40,900, yeah. That's a lot. Most of one tank to take off from Nalvis. I mean, antimatter is very cheap for what it does, but still. Uh, did I break it? I mean, I very clearly broke it. Actually, let's not. Let's just connect that directly to there. Not enough connections available. There we go. And back to the mall. Just double check this one. That's already fine. Cool. All right, so we're not slowing down on... Where's our Vitalic Acid? How much are we requesting? 48k. That is quite a lot. Significantly more than... That's like five train loads. And a train limit of three, so it's definitely not the trains. Auto save. Max schnell bitte. Did I forget to turn debug mode off? There we go. Uh, this one's got Vitalic Acid, at least. Seems to be working properly. Although these furnaces aren't. It's probably just waking up again. Aquim Powder is positive, yeah. Does this one have a higher priority or something? That one's already doing its thing. That one's going to the same station? Seriously? That one's retiring. And this one is headed for this station. Okay. 
So where is it now? All the way up there. Oh, that's actually not that far. How often do we need a train load to support this? Uh, 40 Vitalic Acid per second is almost a stack. 200 seconds. That really shouldn't be much of a problem. I think we're just still playing catch-up with the Vitalic Acid. Although, I would have expected LTN to balance these two a bit better. It's fine. Alright, what should we do in the meantime, I wonder? Holmium is looking good. Holmium cable is in motion, that's what I want to see. Uh, and that means blue circuits are already in motion again. Fantastic. This one's a lower... Oh, it's just receiving the cable now. I think that one's a lower priority, because since it has prod 3s... Okay. Um, what about our trains down here? Nothing? Really? Uh, we've got a bit of a queue for the coal. Wait, don't tell me these are chain signals. All the way through. Uh... They could be going this way, but they're choosing not to. Yeah, they're, they're trying to go the shortest path, even though if you take into account the signals, this would be much, much better. And so they're blocking the fluid wagons sometimes from getting over here. Alright, I need to head down there and add some signals. Uh, and I think I'll just... This might have just been an accident, honestly, putting this signal here. Actually, if I just mark it for deconstruction... Yeah, this one now turns around. Oh, wow, that's a... That's got to go a little ways to get a loop. But it should have all of these trains... Deciding to come through this way. So why are they waiting still? Because this is all chain signals? I messed up. But this... This is a separate... Uh, this is a separate block. So I don't understand why they're not going. Oh, they're going now. Alright, so we're going to get rid of... All of the signals that say we can go that way. Add some regular signals. Like so. Probably don't need this many. Good grief, this is longer than it looks. Uh, that's still a chain signal, actually. 
And then this one is a regular signal. Get rid of all the ones at the bottom here. Let me just deconstruction plan of this. Actually, why don't we just blacklist trees and rocks? That'll work. Okay, that's going to take a moment. There we go. And then regular signal. Uh, I could use an upgrade planner for this. If we put in chain signal, the only thing we can change it to is regular signal. But it doesn't do an automatic swap for those two. Okay, and I might just take the legs out of our spider, and we might find that we don't have to keep stopping and starting to make the bots do their thing that way. Though I wonder if we could get away with at least one pair of legs. I'm curious actually, exactly how fast do we have to go before the bots will stop automatically jumping out to do these things? For science. What's the biggest coal consumer? Plastic? Yeah, I'm almost positive. Um, can we check that? Let's see. Coal consumption is 17,000 per minute. 20,000 per minute over the last 10. And how much plastic are we making? Obviously the productivity modules make it a bit harder. We're making 28k plastic per minute. Uh, I think it's... One coal makes two plastic. Even with productivity bonuses, that is... Probably more than half of our coal goes to plastic. Roughly. I suspect. I don't suppose we got that plastic into space yet. Nope. We kind of need it for the deep space signs. Where else are we even taking plastic? If I prioritize everything, I prioritize nothing. But I kind of want to force it to finish that delivery. Hey, that's what I want to see. Although it might be temporary. Hmm. It is looking very temporary. This is coal. This is also coal. We don't have any more petroleum on its way here. Rip. Um, how is... I see two trains, that's more than zero. Okay, how can this be green right now? Unless it's that bug that just means the light is wrong. How can there be no trains heading for this station if we're always pretending 
There's 100k crude oil available for pickup. There should always be a train heading for these stations. Let's get these ones in motion. You got fuel, right? Yeah. That's fine. Wait, what? What was that? Character. Oh, that's the nav set. Okay. Felt weird. Uh, did we finish what we're doing here? The bots didn't upgrade this. What is this bot doing? It looks weird. Alright, so I think I'm gonna have to like stop next to each and every one of these uh, rail chain signals. Oh good, the butts are just being super unresponsive. Okay, on to the next one then. I'm just going to do it myself. Rail chain signal is in the way. The upgrade planners seem to be less responsive. Compared to deconstruction. Why is that spider moving so slowly? It took the legs out of it. The uh, exoskeletons. This is actually as fast as you can get a spider to go, but we've got low UPS. I don't know if snow affects their speed as well, though. Matrim? Welcome, welcome. Might be doing well. Alright, so what's our production of Aquium lately? Uh, looking pretty good overall. Oh, I wasn't looking for Naquitite. I mean, I guess, but I'm more interested in these products. That's a pretty significant increase during the last hour overall, although ingots have spiked way back down. Probably because we're still catching up with the acid. Nope, we actually caught up. Why is this one not taking off then? Not enough water? Oh, because we're still looking for 24,000. Uh, sure. Okay. Might be a minute before we get another delivery, at least from these ships, because all of them were overfilled with water and stuck in the solar system, running off of solar power. Uh, never mind, they've already gotten to Stardust. Jeez, they're fast. This one's waiting at Stardust, this one's filling up, this one's coming back, this one's coming back, this one's waiting at Stardust, waiting at Stardust, waiting at Stardust. And heading for Stardust. So, doesn't even take very long until... Wait, what? 
Why are we not taking off? Um, if Naquitite greater than 15,800 on the red signal, 15,000. Uh, I only used Picker Dollies to change this earlier. There shouldn't be an issue. Let's check that we are reading every bit of Naquitite in the robot network, apart from what's in the ship on the green wire. Should be. We don't randomly have Naquitite in a storage chest somewhere, somehow. Oh, it is tra it is taking off. There was just a little bit left to fill up. Okay, cool. I think it was also because the logistic... Uh, read logistic network contents gives us a negative when bots are moving stuff around sometimes. Do all interstellar asteroid fields have varying amounts of Naquium? Uh, do they? I believe they do, but very, very little in most of them. Like, we looked, Naquitite here says frequency 112%, size 16%. Uh, and we looked around for it. This is the only Naquitite that we found in all of Stardew, scanning all over the place. And it wasn't just left and right. Um, so the fields are pretty weak source if we don't go for the asteroid fields that have higher values. And Stardust is by far the richest one we've found. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next one. More to the point, we've gotten out of the way of the other trains, although... I still see zero trains here. There's one leaving. Oh, you're joking. Uh, I'd better head back and manually fix that. Let's just make sure we get the rest of these signals done. The bots are so much more responsive if we do deconstruct and place again compared to an upgrade planner. Does your PC not start smoking when you play Factorio? Not really. Um, if anything, it would be a game that's intensive for the graphics card that would make it warm up the most, I think. Uh, come to think of it, playing some Borderlands 3, I was a little disturbed by the fan noise I was hearing. Maybe I should uh, blow the dust away or something. But running Factorio, no, it does no such thing. I'm pretty sure the bandwidth, is, uh, the bottleneck is still uh, RAM. Gotta get some water cooled RAM. And 
into them. Alright, I'm just going to manually pull this train back a bit and add a... That shouldn't have been a regular rail signal. This should be a chain signal. What RAM are you currently using? Um, it's actually capped at, I think, 2933 because of the motherboard, but it's like 3000 megahertz. Water cooled RAM, epic. Yeah. Water cooled everything. Most practical. You are waiting for ice, and everything else is ready. Uh, why don't we have lots of ice here? 1k, let's make that... 6, uh, 8,000? That's how much fits in a uh, short train. still making Aquim? We are not. Uh, yes we are actually. Oh. And look at that. Did I set the old block to be like negative priority or something? No, I switched it off. Okay, cool. Um, if I was really pedantic, and I mean really pedantic, I would like Picker dollies this stuff over to keep the productivity bonuses, but I'm not going to go that far. Alright, let's get rid of that signal. And... Manual. Pull that back a bit. Away you go. No stop is accessible from current position. Wait, what? Oh, that's its destination. Dub. This is the pickup one. I see one whole train here. There should be like six. That's what I want to see, at least until those oil fields actually manage to run dry. Or not the oil fields, but the tanks, more to the point. I guess we'll spam out some more fluid wagons. Is this... Where it lines up. I didn't leave one at the mall, did I? I did. Okay, and we have a random bot floating back towards us with a with a rail signal from a very odd direction. I wonder how long it's been trying to catch us. Is that still connected? Yeah, it's still connected. Well, 
If we're getting a queue of trains to pick up coal over here, uh, it tells me that, like all the time, it tells me that we don't actually have a problem with uh, the rail throughput through here. All of these trains backed up are probably because we've got... What are you doing? Wait, what? Oh... Uh, let me fix that. And on this side as well. These roundabouts have been unusable whenever there's a train dropping off stuff for the green circuits. Because I missed a couple of signals. There's only one of those new builds, I think. Yeah, only one. That's probably going to help with the traffic around here. But also we've got, like, train limit of six. That might be a bit excessive. Quite possibly. What deep space science are you on? Uh, we're trying to research deep space science too, but we need a ton of Naquium to make its way into orbit. Um, we need a thousand, sorry, two thousand Deep Space Science Pack 1, um, which means, uh, one thousand Deep Space Catalogs, we'll be getting that once we get a trainload of Naquium structural data. And also, we're going to need another train load of energy data. Structural... Oh, structural is literally just about ready to go. We need 19 more Naquim structural data before a train will come for this automatically. What about the other stuff? Uh, it's like half, half done. And we need plastic to get... I need to bump up the priority on this. Oh, it's negative one? Well, there's your problem. Partly. Wait, I understand why this is negative one priority. I would like the ion stream priority here to be low, but the plastic priority to be high. To do that, I would either need to do two separate train stops, or I would have to cycle a different set of settings on a timer and I just don't want to do either of those things um, but we're getting less and less dependent on ion stream and we've got plenty of throughput for it so then again I really don't want ships to run out Ion stream. But the priority on this one, okay. So this this is the ion that goes to Nalvis, that goes to a lot of our spaceships. Pretty much all of them actually, that still use ion stream. If that's got a higher priority than this one, um then basically all of the ion stream is gonna end up over here. I'm just going to make them equal priority. We're bottlenecked on the plastic anyway. Um, don't we have the Naquim here though? We do. We need more Naquim ingots for this one. Just a few. Or I could trigger a delivery a bit earlier. But I think what I want to do is send the plastic 
that we've got in this cargo train. Uh, it hasn't moved in a long time, which is kind of disturbing. It's probably because... No... Oh, it's probably because this is a really high priority for plastic, and it uses a, a lot of it, and we haven't been making Holmium cable for a while, because we didn't have Holmium because of that other issue. So when this eventually gets saturated, then things are going to look a bit different. And I really don't want to deprioritize this one, because... We need this stuff for blue circuits. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to send this manually. That should, hopefully, be more than enough plastic to get us to our goal. For the short term. Oh, did we fix this yet? We need some more signals over here. And I, I am questioning the necessity of having a train limit of six um, for these blocks. Let's bump it down to like three. Yeah, I don't mind having one or two trains queuing to drop off at each one of these. That should probably help. Alright, did our plastic get where we need it to? Yes, indeed. And is our train going to take plastic up here anytime soon? Or do we have a million things crying out for plastic right now? I think I will just trigger a delivery early from this station. Hey, good Chen. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is there a signaling issue for the oil drills? I don't think so. It's only one place that's going. We've got... Signal... 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 And so on. Uh, and they're both one-way pieces of rail. Yeah, that shouldn't be an issue. Speaking of which, uh, let's get our new fluid wagons in motion. I do wish it took fewer clicks to do this part. There we go. Also, can we j Oh, I see why I didn't do this earlier. What if... Hmm. If I bring this down, we get one more. I'll just delete these ones. Working as intended, slash. Meant to do that all along. Okay, uh, back to the mall then. I see one, two. Then the other two trains down here. Is it because we've still got plenty of crude oil available at other stops, maybe? And they're going for the shorter journeys. If that's the case, uh, all the more reason that we need more fluid wagons, apparently. 
plenty of crude oil here. No crude oil here. It doesn't seem like we should need this many crude oil trains. Uh, fluid trains, rather. Especially considering I keep finding multiple fluid wagons idle. Hmm. Well, we're going to find out. Off you go. Where did that blueprint... oh. That's right, I did that before, didn't I? Lord Wagon. Alright, if that doesn't reach the point of saturation, I don't know why it wouldn't. We're looking for crude oil here once we lose, once we're down to 80k, so I definitely wouldn't expect if we've got enough crude oil and trains, I wouldn't expect them to just be delivering it too late. This one's got plenty though. This one doesn't exactly have plenty, but there's more on the way, I think. This one is still functional. Hmm. Alright, what should we do next? Honestly, I really want to be designing Arcospheres. Uh, how much Nequium do we have? Why are you not taking off? Still waiting for ice? Did I not make short trains able to pick up the ice here? I did not. Okay. That would probably help. That would probably help quite a lot, actually. I'm surprised it's still producing at full speed, actually. That is a short train, fantastic. Let's go get some more, um... Uh, some more tier 9 modules. And I was thinking maybe... And or we could start working on the next outpost. For Naquium, if that's even necessary. Wait, what? Oh. Hold on. Tier 3, Tier 6. I did not just delete that. Okay, cool. I don't think I really need to be requesting the stuff for refueling antimatter right now. Um, I'll hold on to the remote outpost uh, power plant stuff. Energy beam receiver. It's down here. Okay, cool. And then... And then 
what? I don't think I really need any spiked steel walls these days. Let's drop that down to zero. And how did I get here? Where's my ship? I think I rode the module box down and it auto launched. So now. Yeah, I think I'll take the. Uh, I, I'll take the Naquim ingots upstairs. Since we need a few of those up here, I think. Oh, not here. Here. No, we've actually still got the ingots. We're just waiting on plastic. Yes. Good. That's what I need to see. Who'd have thought we'd be bottlenecked on something other than Naquium on these builds? Fantastic. Hmm. If we had the big containers, I would definitely make the secure canisters here. Uh, actually, I don't know. If I make them available to the rail network and also able to flow back into this belt, then a train could come here looking for canisters and find that there aren't enough. And especially considering we need to be able to get rid of the scrap, that could end up being bad. Cool. So for every thousand ion, we get exactly one Naquim energy data. That stuff is expensive. So we need... Oh my goodness. Uh, we've got 2k, 2k, 370. Uh, like 408 here. We need 2,000. We need 1 million... 500,000, uh, 592,000 ion stream to get our train load of Naquim energy data. If my math is not incorrect. That is not a small amount of ion. That is a very large amount of ion. Wow. Does the game run slower with less UPS? Yes, it does. Yeah, it's one of those games that will never actually get, like, jerky um, when the frame rate drops. It'll just... the actual game will slow down. Alright, let's launch this thing early. And I'll use that to get back to Nervous. Gotta make sure I pay attention and step outside. What happens if I jump out of the ship and it goes to Nervous orbit? Like, if, if it anchors while I'm outside of the ship, do I just die? Is all of my stuff unrecoverable? I'm very curious about that. I almost think we should... I mean, it would be a lot of work to replace them now, but... I almost think we should make antimatter versions of these little ships. 
Um, we could bring more stuff per launch. And or just... Need to spend a whole lot less rocket fuel. Does rocket fuel trace back to petroleum? Sort of. We crack... We use a lot of light oil to make liquid rocket fuel. And we could be cracking that to petroleum. So, kind of, yeah. Why are you using that small ship? Because I needed something to get back to orbit with. I've got bigger ships. And where is this train taking? That's like the one place we don't desperately need the ingots. It's fine, whatever. Ingots aren't really the issue as much at the moment. Let's go... Uh, not to the mall, actually. Actually, do we still have the tier 9 modules here? No, I got them all. Okay, cool. We've got 8, 8, and 0. Yeah, that is... Naquim energy data is incredibly expensive. And we need five plastic per canister. That's not that much, but it's not small. Not to mention ten copper. Is there another way to make these? Secure canister. Nope, there's only one recipe. Okay, then. Could always do the water-based rocket fuel recipe. The one that uses copper. And also gives us a bit of scrap back. That might not be the worst idea. Oh, it's one copper to one solid rocket fuel? Hmm. As opposed to... A not insignificant amount of... We're basically trading copper for petroleum if we do that, which might not be the worst idea with our current levels. Oh. Yeah. I should use bots to rebalance this stuff. But that said... Um, the fact that the storage has copper plate available at all tells me that we're doing okay for copper plate. Why don't we just do a build that makes solid rocket fuel out of copper and make it a low priority drop off? Uh, make the drop off a copper plate low priority, that is. That sounds like an excellent idea that I should have done sooner. Good call. Uh, that is just a tiny amount of iron. I'm not too worried about that one. We can... Is this fast? 500 seconds? That is the exact opposite of fast. Um... That is incredibly slow, actually. It's only two water per second. How long does liquid solid rocket fuel normally take? One second? <laughs> uh huh, okay. We also have to deal with the scrap. I was gonna just shove it in here, but maybe we need a little bit more space to do this properly. Uh, let's get ourselves a destination before we figure this out. It's been a while since I got the... Uh, the spiders here to deconstruct some stuff. Do we really not need lubricant anywhere? 
I suppose not. Oh yeah, I brought them up here actually. And go. And go. We've arrived. Actually, I don't want to accidentally pick up a heat pipe. It'll lose all of its uh, heat. Alright, so places we've been with mysterious structures. We've been here, 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 and here. Didn't we find something cool at Cephi? Yeah, Plato. We haven't been there yet. Uh, and there's probably... There's also a mysterious structure at... Sinon, I guess? Let's go there. Oh, I forgot to empty this of... Uh, that's fine. All right, I'm going to take a short break. Let's fire up the words on the stream. And what was the other thing I was about to do, though, before I forget? Uh, I'm just going to add this icon here in case I forget. Oops. Let's mute the browser. Okay. Copy link. Uh, what was I looking for? Copper plate to solid rocket fuel. Why can't I see it here? What is the recipe called? Oh, it's got, like, water to solid rocket fuel. As if we care about that as the main ingredient. Okay. Add tag. This one. I'm just going to add this here so I kind of remember... Right, uh, 30 seconds, we're going to start the words on the stream, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Have fun and take care.
One more. Muted. Whoops, thank you. Good call, El Puncher. Alright, so we got 19 minutes until we reach our special destination up here. Um, I want to check on all of our Stardust ships. Uh, close. It's waiting to drop off at Stardust there. Or pick up, rather. If we see all of the engines moving, we know it's totally fine. Stardust 4 is... 23,500 water, that's perfect. Um, we've got plenty of ice here now, I imagine. 8,000, fantastic. We are waiting on antimatter stream before we take off. And we still haven't emptied the Nacrotite just yet. How many bots do we have here? 500 idle. 600 logistic bots. I feel like this should be getting emptied a bit quicker. Oh, I see the problem. Even though we've got a supercharger here, the bots just go for the nearest charger, which is a roboport. So they keep, they keep going to this one and having to halo around it. That is suboptimal to say the least. Um, if I was to do this again, I would put the spaceship console on the left, or I would put this pickup station on the right. Name in base, no worries. HP Crusher, let's go. Uh, how about up here? H P. We've got an R. That's basically a P.
Uh, an O is not exactly a C. This is better. And we'll swap those around. S H E R Fantastic And I think we can move this around a bit first There we go. Good to see you again, HP. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Why is there a random signal here? Probably because it was... Uh, from when we had all those rail coming out of the main bus. Let's extend our robo-network up here for a moment. And then... Check on this one. It still doesn't have the antimatter fuel that we're looking for. I think I should probably just drop this to 49k. Is it going to take all of those bots with it? I think it will. Yep. That works. All right. Checking on all of our new sh uh, new ships again. Number one is looking good. Two is looking good. Three is looking a bit slow. Wait, where is it actually? No, three is waiting to uh, waiting its turn. It's in a queue. Four is in motion. Five is waiting. Six is waiting. Seven is in motion. 8 is at the mine, and 9 is waiting. Um, I realized that we had a bit of a issue with the ships earlier, but I get the feeling that we might actually have enough ships to keep up with this mine now. I guess if I put the RoboPort up the front here, um, that would also resolve the issue of all of the bots haloing around this RoboPort when they unload. Or if I put the drop uh, the pickup station down here as well. I don't want to have to change all of the ships one by one, preferably. So why is this one not taking off now? I want to confirm that all of these are actually full. Looks like it. Hmm. That means the negative value that we get from read logistic network contents, just because the bots are moving stuff around, is enough to throw this off to the point where we're not actually... I think the ship's not going to take off until all of the storage chests are completely full with the way it is now. So I think we'd better drop the threshold on this a bit lower. There we go. Considering how many ships we've got waiting, I think it would be better if they leave not quite full rather than waiting that long. 
Finally something to invest all my points. Hey, Engie. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Name in base? How about up here? Uh, we got... I need to do a three. There we go. Are you perhaps implying I should come up with some more big ticket items? I already have three. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> I I wasn't gonna say so. <laughs> I had something in mind recently. I can't remember what it was that I was gonna maybe do a big point reward for. Um. But I'm open to suggestions. Oh, did I not add it already? Let me check. Well, one of one of the ideas I had. Yeah, live tutorial. I'll basically drop everything to show how something's done. Nuka planet for 100k? No. <laughs> Spaceship jousting. I would if I could. Fat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Alright, so we've got Nequitite, Nequitite, and this is the old block we're getting rid of. Cool, cool, cool. We might... Dare I say... Need more of these blocks? Nah, surely two is enough. For a while. I would imagine. Alright, so is it chemical plant, or... What do we use to make... This recipe? I imagine it's chemical plant. If it's not that, it is fuel refinery. What's going on here? Which spider is overburdened? I can't actually... Oh, it must be this one. Yep, there it goes. Okay. Water to liquid... Uh, solid rocket fuel. But also there's some copper and scrap involved. And not this one. Downloading the true nukes mod and detonate the one gigaton bomb. It would wipe everything off, even the biggest planets. Yikes. Uh, can we prod this? Yeah, we can prod this. But it's so slow um, that I don't know if I even want to. 0 0.002 copper per second and 0 0.000 to scrap per second. Point oh oh two. This is too slow. I think even with like maximized speed modules. Um, how, how's our power actually? We're using 50% of it during the day. Uh, it's really only a question of if we need more of these reactors to get through the night. Which I seriously doubt for a while. Um, if we were to put in nothing but speed modules, and in the beacon as well, uh, I guess I need to change this. Oh, no I don't. And give it some power. What's our rate now? I think it's going to be so slow, I just don't want to pay the existence of that many more. Yeah, look at this. The fastest we can go is less than 0.02 per second solid rocket fuel. 
That is crazy slow. Although, I wish I'd remembered it when I was trying to figure out how I could pack enough stuff. Uh, when we were using cargo rockets to make new... <gasps> Did this happen while I was on break? We got deep space science too. Although, I can't really do anything with it just yet. Um, all I can actually do is... Set this recipe. And we don't have the catalogs. So that doesn't really do anything just yet. Clap, indeed. Oh yeah, I gotta add those uh, BTTB emotes, don't I? I have a mod suggestion for you. Manual inventory sorting. It can sort chests you open. Makes finding stuff way easier. Interesting. Does that mean every time I open up a Spidertron, it's going to auto-sort and therefore get away from the split-stack problem? I'm very surprised that we got exactly enough... Uh, we did not get exactly enough Deep Space Science to only finish Deep Space Science Pack 2, but we did get exactly the right amount of Deep Space Science 1 delivered to... No? Oh, right. Silly me. That's why... That's why this is behind Deep Space Science Pack 2. Because we can't... Okay. Uh, is there anything else I want to research with... Deep Space Science Pack 1. We've got a thousand. We've got 1124, not counting what's over there. And then multiply that by... Where's the productivity bonus? Oh, plus 109%. So conservatively, we've got like 2500 Deep Space Science Pack 1. I guess we could get better fusion reactors. I really don't care at this point. 17,000 for better mining productivity. Ouch. I mean, I should, but... Uh... Uh... Factory Spaceship 1? Yes. Factory Spaceship 2? Yes. I think we're getting those. Uh, we need Deep Space Science Pack 2 to get the long-range star scanning. Um, speed 9? Rod 9? Those are so expensive, I don't know if I'm ever going to actually... On the other hand, we've already got all of those things. What does it take to make an 8? The 8 also requires extended biological catalogue. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's not a whole lot more in terms of processing units, at least. Hmm. But then... It, it's the fact that it's at the top of a pyramid. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Yeah, that's... Uh, the, the thought of making 3, 9, 27 prod 6s to make 1 prod 9? Mm -mm, not yet. Not yet. Total raw 720 hours, indeed. Fracco, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Passion Sausage. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. What's the long-range star scanning research for? I don't know yet. Some distant galaxies can be identified by specific patterns of unusual stars. Results are logged in the Informatron. 
I don't really care about robot speed anymore. We've got, like, enough. Um, especially not for more deep space science than we've got at the moment. I don't really care about energy shields. Energy weapon damage is not insignificant. It's not going to change our ship designs right now. Um, does this make the... Does this make the shield projectors more energy efficient? I mean, it'll matter for future designs, but I don't really feel the need to prioritize it. Oh, this stuff. Character speed, not that exciting, especially for 1600. Uh, health, crafting speed. Inventory slots are a little bit tempting, but... Not as much for 1600. Let's go for factory ship. Oh, I almost forgot. Antimatter reactor. I don't know. I don't know if I even want antimatter reactors, to be honest. We had a look at them in editor extensions, and the rate at which they consume antimatter is just way too fast. Maybe for an endgame ship. But by the time we're doing that, knocking off this research is pretty trivial. This requires Deep Space Pack 2. Yeah, I think we're definitely going for... the factory ships. We can immediately double our maximum hull for our spaceships. And then if we go for... Oh, this is actually infinite now. Deep Space Science Pack 1 is the last thing we need to go infinite on energy weapon damage. But of course the cost is ludicrous. Um... Maybe just one of them? Because another... Another 70%, another 30% on lasers and shields could be pretty relevant for a spaceship design. Added a shield projection ammo category so that shield projector does not appear as an entity benefiting from beam damage upgrades. It never did get the benefits. Shields don't benefit from energy damage upgrade. Okay. Thanks for telling me. Rama, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You need 19,683 level 1 modules for a single level 9? Yikes. Um, I'll think about this one. So it's basically just another 70% on the lasers, which sounds like a lot but we're already at plus 70% nine times, I think. So it's a really marginal upgrade. Oh, and these already... yeah. All right, well, we're doing fake a factory spaceship in any case. And look at it go. I don't think we need a bigger lab setup than this, to be honest. Like, ever. <laughs> Let's look at our hull integrity. That used to be our maximum right there. Oh no, wait, this is a smaller ship. Uh, quickly, quickly, find Stardust ship. Integrity check. This is our current, and now this is our new normal. And now we could double the amount of stuff we put in this. I'd be curious to see how fast this would go if we just doubled the containers. Um, because I don't really want to make the hauler ships much bigger than this. If we put in, like, 
a hundred percent more container stress and it goes more than half the speed uh then it should be a net positive right okay so we need to actually produce some science pack two um didn't we already oh yeah where's the catalogs We've already got Annihilation data, we need Hyperlattice data, Singularity data, and Time Space Anomaly data. Why is there no Cryonite here? Because I didn't... Yeah. Cryonite's cheap anyway, let's just allow it everywhere. Um... Hyperlatter, Singularity, and the other one. Annihilation data is much more straightforward. Doesn't need any Naquium or anything. Hyperlattice requires Naquium plate. So we haven't even gotten to one trainload of that this whole time. Did I disable it? I did not. So that's just going to happen. We just need to wait for more Naquium. Uh, this one needs Naquium cubes. No, wait. Yeah, no, it's got Naquium cube here. That was a 50% Naquium cube recipe. So, uh, one Naquium cube is 50% Singularity data, 50% Naquium cube. What ratio does that translate to? One to one, I think. Uh, we also don't have particle stream here, what? Did I not? Oh, I missed a pipe. Where's our construction spiders? So we've actually... Where's our thermofluid? Is that not connected? It is not. So on this side we're missing particle stream. And on this side, we're missing super cool thermofluid. And we've made like 27 products in this entire block. We're bottlenecked on Naquium Cube anyway. But still. Oh, we also missed this piece of belt. How many little mistakes did we make in this build? Okay. Uh, so once the spiders get here, that should be resolved. Uh, so this one doesn't need any Naquium. These two we've checked, and this one is also waiting on Naquium cubes. So we just need obscene amounts of Naquium. We have produced a bunch of this already. Not a whole lot of Singularity data. For obvious reasons. Uh, so yeah, I guess Arcosphere Collection theoretically is going to happen. If I just click this, it's just going to take a while. Um, have I set it up so that... I have not. Okay, I need our spiders to visit this spot as well, since we're moving up to another tier of science. We need to balance these two. So that inserter should be disabled, cool.
How's our Naquium production looking? It's looking pretty good. That one, not so much. Are these all working? Not enough washed Naquitite. That's the same ratio, right? Washed Naquitite, plus 0 0.2880, plus 0 0.2880. Are we short of a resource here? Is something broken? Or is it just waking up again? How much Naquitite is up here? That's more than a train load, which would imply that we're not having trouble keeping up with that. So why... I mean, this belt gets it last. It's 50-50, 50-50, and then the last of it here. So it would take by far the longest to saturate down here. But still, if there was time to get like two train loads of Naquitite up here, I would have thought, why is this one not working? The belt is saturated. There's something... Wait, what? No, that should be saturated. This is crushed aquatite, and we should be net positive on that. So that's fine. Yeah, I don't understand where the slowdown is here. Are these ones having trouble outputting? They shouldn't. Doesn't look like it. Oh, this one is. Hmm. Oh. You know what we should do here? Is just put all of that stuff on the right side. Because it's going to filter the... It's going to filter by resource over this way, and it doesn't matter which side of the belt these things are on. Let's do that over here as well. Although this one doesn't seem to be having the same issue. Weirdly enough. It must just take a long time to saturate. I think that's mostly it. Ooh, picking up plate. Okay, spiders should be at the research place now, or the, the science build. We're going to put red wire on this one now, and its condition is Deep Space Science Pack 2 has to be less than or equal to Deep Space Science Pack 3. So we're going to pretend we've got a million two gajillion Deep Space Science Pack 3s, so that's always active. Or I guess I could just... I think it's going to be easier coming back to this when I forgot about it to find... to look at where that combinator is as opposed to 
remembering to change this from being enable disable or vice versa okay we do already have all the requests over here yes good and we've got an abundance of annihilation data because that's easy okay so the quest is still to speed up uh, Naquatite production. I'm pretty sure once I make a second mine at uh, Stardust, we are actually going to need more of these ships. One of them waiting, two of them waiting. Yeah, we might not even... Now that I look at it, maybe we still need more ships to take full advantage of this. Either way, we're building more. Um, but I'm way over here for now, so... We're not going to be building that just yet. I could send a construction ship to Hankerus so I don't have to do that part myself. Might be a good idea. I haven't... Oh, wait, where are they? Outpost... Uh... Oh, one of them is already at Calidus Orbit. I might even just leave that there so that I can easily add to this pl Oh! We're, we're slightly short on energy here. Did we run out of solar panels building this? No. Or did I not give that order yet? Take care, Whiskers. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good one. Yeah, this will probably push it over the edge, I dare say. We only need 0.8 gigawatts. It's 12 megawatts per solar panel. There we go. Actually, that was less than I thought it would be. And I'll let the bots reach. Ooh. I've never actually seen this thing have to do its job to that extent. Literally recharging like a hundred bots. Also, I want that to be a pylon substation. Um, do we still have scaffolding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might even leave that one there. So where's number two? Penthus Orbit. I don't remember why I sent you here. Uh... Do we want to exploit any of these planets? Heliolite has iron ore. Okay, that's very attractive. 8,000 radius iron ore. And pretty close to Calidus. Um, but we haven't struggled with iron for a long time. So I don't really have... This doesn't count as a hostile, does it? I think it does, even though it doesn't attack us. So we would have to kill the nice spider before confirming hostile extinction? I don't want to do that. Is there a way to construct scaffolding and solar panels in one go? Not to my knowledge. Uh, if there's a mod that does that, I 
probably would like to try it. Uh, Penthus? Oh, that's the parent, rather. Cronus. Beryl core fragments. We did briefly have a problem with Beryl, but that was literally only because I broke it. And we've only got the one planet that we've had for ages, Morpheus. Uh... That's interesting. Oh, no it's not. That is perfectly fine, actually. Morpheus... Uh... What's going on here? No water? Oh, no. Where are you? I have a feeling we're going to have similar problems with the other Morpheus ships. They were probably just stuck out there so long. And don't tell me I didn't resupply them with water here. No, I did. So how on earth did they run out of water? Um... What? Well, that's gonna... That's... That's gonna cause a dent in our barrel supply. This one seems totally fine. Nuke it from space? Space nukes. Perhaps. Um... Well then. It, it would potentially honestly be easier to set up our first outpost with on planet with antimatter ships uh, picking up Beryl from here than fixing the Morpheus issue. But is that the reason that I brought Outposter 2 out here? Oh, we've got Vulcanite. 5,000. That's pretty attractive as well. Um, so we got Vulcanite, Beryl, and Iron. Fairly close to Nalvis. Also Vitamelange, but we've got tons of Vitamelange. I guess we could start setting up here. Uh, let's figure out where we're going to anchor first. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good start. I don't think we're going to do better than that. Starship Troopers said it best, the only good bug or spider is a dead bug or spider. But that spider gave us Arcospheres. Just for playing a game. I mean, it also insulted us a lot, but... Arcospheres, though. Yeah, we're not going to find a better landmass to start with than this one. Um, why don't we anchor about here? Spoiler? Wait, what? But that happened, like, last week on the stream. Or maybe two weeks ago, I guess. Or three? I don't know. Time is a flat circle. Um, I guess I have to be careful about spoilers for things that have happened while I'm streaming space exploration. Uh, the barrel, though. If not for the fact that these things are carrying so much, uh, so many barrel core fragments, it would almost be easier to visit them and just deconstruct them. Next thing you'll be like, oh, but then I wouldn't be able to board the ship that I came on. Next thing you'll be like, iron ore can be smelted. <laughs> Indeed. I almost want to turn back, but we're like halfway there. 
Let's do the stuff up here first, and then when we come back, we'll take some water barrels of all things to our ships down here. Um, we'll need some space assembly machines, just so that we can empty the water barrels. I think we're going to have to build a little bit of spaceship floor outside the ship. Um... Just like we did to get antimatter into uh, into those other ships, but a lot simpler. I don't know. They should have had a lot of water, like. Like, we almost fill these tanks before they take off. And it should have taken many trips for them to run out. And they get refueled at both uh, both ends. So I really don't know how this happened. I'm slipping a bit behind on my game, so it's a little bit of a spoiler. But I personally don't care slash mind. Need to catch up. I've got Nalvis 90% cleared now. Nice. Bio 2 is up, other sciences are at 3, not long now until they're all done, but I'm still bottlenecked and slugging through the fixes. Yeah, it is a very big playthrough, space exploration. Um, Alright, what should we be doing right now? I still see only one train down here picking up crude oil. I really hope this is just because we've actually got so much more crude oil than we need, we just didn't have the trains to move it. Let's get these ones moving. Uh, and let's have a look at our crude oil here. We've got lots. Zero. Zero. Lots. Hmm. That does not seem to be the everything saturated that I was looking for. And a little bit over here. A little bit here. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it is catching up now. Energy 4, Material 2, Astro 1, Bio 0. Oh no. I wonder what we should even do with our 2000 hull stress. Honestly, I will probably just keep using the ship design that we've made and just cram it full of more chests. Because I'm pretty sure... Maybe I should jump into editor extensions to test this. Um, but I'm pretty sure adding hull stress... Um, we're going to get higher throughput overall with more chests with the same engines. How much crude is even able to be requested from one of those refineries? Uh, do you mean the LTN request? Um, we've got 200k that can fit in here, so we're requesting 180k, as opposed to measuring all of these tanks and requesting lots and lots of it. It gets pumped down this way. And it's a very similar layout for the new blocks. I don't suppose we could possibly be starting to get on top of petroleum? No. No, of course not. How silly of me. 
We do have another 100k coming in right now. Oh, and... This is actually a good example of something... I only figured this out like yesterday or the day before, so... I kind of forgot to include it in the LTN tutorial thing earlier on in the stream. But if I pretend we've got even less petroleum here than we actually do, um, we can get... Even though we've got fumes of petroleum in here, if we request 200,000, which is what can fit in these storage tanks, with a request threshold of 100k, we're never actually going to get like two trains scheduled to deliver petroleum here at the same time. But I can actually just kind of request more petroleum than can fit in these tanks. Although I should probably limit it to how much could fit in the entire area. So we've got... Well, let's count. Uh, let's not count those. Those are not holding petroleum. 9 plus 14, 2300 from pipes. Oh, not to mention 2400 from the 3B pipes. Uh, so 24 plus 14, 38 plus 9, 47, 4700, and then 12 times 400. Uh, we can actually fit 9,000 fluid on top of what goes in the storage tanks. So let's do that. We're going to request 209,000. And our train limit is more than one. So if there's two train loads of petroleum available, we should be able to get two train loads being delivered at the same time. That plastic, though. How far to our destination? Only four minutes. Because antimatter is nice and quick. Is there anything good up here? Prism has a mysterious structure. So does Grilla. They're both huge. So does Vedan. So does Zagul. So does Dolentia, and Adul does not. Good grief. That's a lot of antimatter fuel uh, to clear that one out. I don't know if we can do it in one trip. Hey, Repetitive Beats, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And we've got two up here. That means the refinery can only get one train load at a time, I guess. Uh, the refinery? How much crude is even able to be requested from those refineries? Oh, right. And, yeah, maybe I should apply the same logic as I just did with petroleum to the crude oil drop-offs here. I can't... Okay, I do see a yellow light. There is at least one train here right now. If we've got... the pumps going in here would count as well. So that's 4, 8, 16, 3200 um, extra crude oil storage. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 42... Call it like 40... Four, uh, 4, so we'll go 204,000. I doubt we're ever going to fully back this up anyway, but do we have a train limit of one though? Yeah, we do. Let's not do that actually. 
That's something I never even thought of. Good call. And that's our plastic build. Uh, do we have any more of those old oil blocks? I think we do. Alright, so if this suddenly causes like 10 deliveries to be scheduled. That's going to make a huge difference. Because I'm very confident that we actually do have the crude oil to keep up. Uh, why don't we just click on this station name, and we've got... I should have checked how many it was before, but we've got 18 trains in motion coming to... who have coal and heavy oil... Coal and heavy oil? What? That's not what this station is. Oh, no. Uh, what about this one? Have it... Crude oil and water. We've got six trains heading for a station with that name. And we've only got three, as far as I can think of, three of these stations. Balzu, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Three minutes until we reach our destination. Um, I guess we haven't gotten any closer. Uh, we made some hyper lattice data, I think. Data. Aquium energy data we are making. Last 10 minutes. Singularity data. Time space anomaly data at the same time as singularity data. That's interesting. I guess this was when there was a uh, some Naquium plate available for pickup. One, two, three, four, five. Kind of hard to filter them the way I want to, but we are getting some of our super advanced data cards produced. Naquium Cube is a bottleneck for a lot of stuff, so maybe I should crank up the priority on this one. Like priority 9, maybe. Whoops. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I kind of want to make an antimatter ship for building stuff. Seems like a bad idea not to do that, to be honest. Um, it doesn't need to be that. Oh, what's what the. What, the lack of spaceship floor? Huh? There's no spaceship floor here. Why would there be no spaceship floor? Heat shielding and aeroframe bulkhead. There's no bulkheads? Uh-oh. How were we bringing up bulkheads? We've got bulkheads here. What? What's going on? 
Is this thing stuck? Why is this train on manual? Oh no. How long has that been there? Well, that would probably help. Astron is... Astron is taken. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I wonder how much has been waiting on that train. Quite a lot, really. Here's a casual 16,000 steel. 90 seconds till we reach our destination. Um, do I even want to bother with the... Uh... I don't think I will build this. But it would have been good to keep in mind when I was taking cargo rockets to new planets. As long as they aren't waterless, which they never were because we need to make fuel to get out of there. Uh, I could have taken copper plate. Well, let's think about this. Um, I think on Morpheus we still have a cargo rocket silo. To go back to Nalvis costs 431,000 liquid rocket fuel. Um, that's from here to here. 431,000 liquid rocket fuel. Um, I believe it's one solid rocket fuel makes 50. Yep. So, 8,620... And without productivity bonuses, let's say we did use productivity threes, because that's what we would have been using at the time. Productivity bonus would be 24%. Um... So, 81% of the cost. And it was 8,100 and something, I think. Um, let's say 8,200. 8, we would need about six, uh, 6,600 copper plate. So call it 70 stacks of copper plate to turn back into liquid rocket fuel. And then we also have to deal with the scrap. So a bit less than a fifth of the cargo rocket would need to be full of copper plate um, for a trip of that distance to make the liquid rocket fuel for the return trip. And it would be incredibly slow to make that liquid rocket fuel to come back as well. So I don't think it really... I mean, that's relatively really far. Well, kind of far. Like, this is... This is one of the most long distance ones we did for cargo rockets. I think the worst one is up here. It's all the way in Calamity. Oh no, Varus. Varus ships, not you too. What's happened here? There's no heat. They're actually out of uranium. Oh no. We've got so many rescue missions we need to do. Uh, luckily, we're getting our Iridite from Bazanus at Ketobar these days. 
Although I'm not seeing any of that in motion. Just how many things are going to break these days? Uh, we've got... E2 bar 1 is waiting to land at Nalvis. So is number 2. So is number 3. So is number 4. Number 5 is on Nalvis. Is it stuck? Mm, nope. We just don't need that much iridite. Feels a little strange. How much does the scrap recycling give back? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, one scrap is a 10% chance for each iron ore, copper ore, or stone, or 10 heavy oil. So does that mean 10 scrap would represent one of each of those? I think that's how that works. Alright, where are we landing? Uh, not Plato yet. We're not going to Ziada. We do have biters here, so let's look around. Is that biters right next to the pyramid? It is. It's the first time this has actually happened. Um, It's only a few of them. I could land the ship so that the defenses should take care of them. But before I do, I'm also going to put on my lasers. And I'm going to get right next to the door. Anchor down here. Integrity progress. Wait, why did why is it doing an integrity check? I swapped out my power armor, but did that swapping out my power armor items causes it causes it to do an integrity check? That's interesting. Okay. Anchor right about here, please. It still says there's an integrity Okay, never mind. Let me out. No spitters. There we go. This is fine. Cool. Let's get it done before any other friends come along. It's 10% chance individually. Yeah, so like three separate rolls, is that right? Or 10% chance of any one of them, as opposed to... I guess rate calculator will tell us, actually. Luckily, the rolls are actually, like, deterministic and consistent over time. Alright, let's step outside for the janitor. Thank you, janitor. Take a screenshot of this. There's a bunch of stuff still on the bunch of alien guts still on it but we'll take the shot anyway step outside Tarantoga welcome welcome hope you're doing well I should add some doors here maybe I don't have any on me though I need aeroframe bulkhead all right our next stop is called Plato. And let me just get uh, Sinon, S I H N O N. Paste this in here. Pop that. And throw it in the Discord. Cool. 
And we are already on our way to the, uh, the ruin. Cool. Okay. Uh, is that another ruin? Yes, it is. It has a bunch of low-tech looking stuff. Um, some farms. They, they look a lot better on the map than they do here. Uh, we've also got a bunch of stone walls, stone furnaces. These were actually cooking when I saw them earlier. I guess they get started when we first see it. Some wooden barrels. And then all of a sudden, if we keep looking... Uh, where was it? There's something just a little bit more advanced in one of these chests. Here it is. Right next to 1.9k fish. Casual Arcosphere. That's a cool easter egg, indeed. I don't think there's anything else um, that's worth salvaging. It might just literally be here is an Arcosphere, uh, as far as we're concerned. But I'm kind of hoping something happens when we get here. Preferably something that doesn't involve artillery. Come to think of it, that would be a total disaster because I'm carrying uh, the tier, mo tier 9 modules that we've been picking up. Could it be a trap? Maybe. I mean, we had, uh, over here, we had some enemy stuff that messed us up with artillery. I can probably delete that now. Um, but it, it's not like it was, it's not like it appeared out of nowhere or anything. Let me just delete surface on that. Oh, that's right, I can't. I can at least trim it a little bit. Ten seconds to go. And we'll find out what's up on Plato. We've got... So we've got like a dozen ships that we need to rescue now. That... I, I don't so much want to rescue them, though, as much as get them to come home one last time and then retire them. This is a lot of planets that are in this system that we used to think just had, like, two or three bodies in it. I guess we should do more scanning. Oh, let's pop down here first. Um, why don't we land on the sand here? Oh, there's more biters. They've been expanding. Okay. I don't really feel like cheesing it and landing on the water. I've got my lasers ready. Um... I could go for even more speed. And anchor. Right about here. Out we go. Nothing appearing in the stone ruins, it would seem.
Oh yeah, I forgot, I can actually jetpack it. Hmm, maybe I should swap the legs for jetpacks. That's half the point of the uh, adaptive armor, is we can move around fast. We're not... our ship isn't in danger or anything. Just want to clear a generous area and make absolutely sure I don't have to worry about the ship. I thought that would make them attack me immediately. Behemoth worm, best worm? Yeah, definitely. Hardly even felt that. Let's run straight into the big ones. Oh, they didn't even really do any damage. I was going to say we may be getting a bit carried away, but that's actually about the edge of where I want to clear. Check on the ship. Looking good. This calls for a weapon. Even when I run into like five of them, it barely barely chunks the shields at all. I love how you're so fast that the biters seemingly spit completely randomly off the screen. <laughs> Except that's exactly where you would end up if you continued running. Yes. They know to lead the target, but they can't do... Uh, they're not smart enough to do an aggregate of the direction I've been going over the last few seconds or something. How difficult is it to do a stochastic aiming function like that, like in terms of computation time? Oh, we're actually getting slowed down by the spit. It's super trivial, the problem is the amount of RAM required. Really? Wouldn't the amount of RAM be pretty much nothing if you're only doing it for up to like a hundred or so entities? Check on our ship. Ship is fine. Mazel Fazel, Ragati, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. SCB, good to see you again also. World of Warship bots have a C10... A C10 second lead on targets and are potentially very accurate. Neat. You could only do it for the ones in range, but the problem is biters extend their range based on your speed. Yeah, that's true. Alright. 
do I really need to clear this lot? I doubt they're going to be a threat to the ship. Alright, let's have a look-see. Um, I don't really want to touch to capture anything that I don't want to take with me. Because I'm hoping I'll be able to just... Um, cannot open enemy structure. Do I have to, like, walk into it? There we go. Akosphere. Nice suit. Um, but then I have to, I have to take all this fish with me, or destroy the chest. I can't actually mine it? Uh-oh. That'll do. I'm hoping that... If I don't own any of the structures on this planet, I'll be able to uh, delete surface and not have the save file get that much bigger. That chest looks fishy, indeed. You could just nuke the entire thing after you're done. Uh, I could, if I had any nukes. Is that another Arcosphere I see? I'm glad I didn't aim the railgun, like, northward or something. How do I get in there? Is this a maze puzzle? A little bit, yeah. Or I could just... I'm not going to shoot my ship. I'm not going to do that. In fact, let's never use the railgun again. Alright, we did it. Up to sphere. Get out of here. If I accidentally touch one of these, it's gonna have the same effect. Oh, there's another one. Okay, so far that's triple the number of Arco spheres I thought we'd find here. Oh, I can't actually get through the walls with this, either. So the walls just can't be... Are the walls invulnerable? Doesn't the jetpack work? Um, yes. Wait, but no. <laughs> it's make it. I'm bouncing off an invisible wall. Okay, then. Strongest stone walls ever. Nope. Alright, let's have a look around with the nav set. That is not an arcosphere. Is that an Arcosphere? I do believe it is. Oh, and this is a burner lab. Okay then. Yoink. Anything else? It's basically trying to find the needle in the haystack. We already looked here and found one, so it's probably not going to be close to that. Oh, there it is. One more up top. 
Was this it? No, another? Okay. Uh, that would be it, wouldn't it? One last look around. Oh, there's another one. I think we've covered the entire place. Probably. Maybe. Still top right? Yes. Yes, indeed. And top right a Above it, there is one more. Oh, this one? They're so close together. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, we didn't destroy our ship, right? We would never do such a thing. Alright, cool. So we got uh, eight Arcospheres. Not bad at all. Couldn't you technically farm spheres by repeatedly resetting the surface? I doubt it. Bottom right. I think we went to the bottom right. Yeah, we destroyed this chest. And this one. Oh. Wow, yet another one. Okay. They're not spawning when I'm not looking, right? That would be too sneaky. How do I get there? Maybe do another close search of the whole thing? Hmm... Uh, where is it? Way down there. Can you deconstruct plan over everything? Not really. I can take this concrete. Don't tell me that's going to count as player entities and I can't... Um... Can't delete surface on this place. If you railgun your ship's reactors, will it go nuclear? No. I don't... Actually, I don't know. I don't have experience with these things. It might. Unfortunately, I don't have anything except for the railgun for destroying the containers. Okay. Are we done? If you deconstruct attempt over the chest, does it show Arcosphere? I don't think so. It doesn't show anything that's in the enemy chests. Alright. Oh, that was a hole and a half. We got nine Arcospheres. Or should I expect a round number, perhaps? That's not an Arcosphere. No, I think we probably maybe got most of them. Probably. 
Perhaps you've railgunned one of them? It's possible. It's not probable, but it is possible. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, and I guess that's everything in this place. How much fuel do we have? Oh, like all of it. 43 out of 50. It's going to take a ton of fuel to get 8,000 radius, 8,600 radius, uh, 5.6k radius, 5.7. That is, that is a lot. But there was only one that was needed over here, I think. Two of them. I think I'll just get uh, Basilius off the off the list. And meanwhile, I would like to churn out some more zone discovery, just in case we find a planet uh, that's in that system on the way there. Nine of them seems reasonable? Yeah, it's a massive hole, I think. Considering, I think we got eight from the giant spider. Asteroid belt. That's not what I'm looking for. Infernox. That is oil, nothing special. Pretty small. Uh, it's close to here, which means it's probably far from Nalvis. And then we've got... Zanok. Vulcanite. Large. Distant. Nothing special. Arendelle. 10,000 radius. Uh, it's kind of far away. Lots of uranium. Orpheus? It's just Morpheus minus the M. 0% biters, decent size, shockingly close to Nalvis? Uh, the only downside at all is it's waterless. 6.2k radius iron, really close to Nalvis. It's in Electra. Electra. Okay. Well, that is going to be bumped up on the priority for consideration. And then we got Snek. 9,000 radius. Uh, what's its distance from Nalvis? It's too far. Asimius. Okay. Arendelle sounds like something from Lord of the Rings. It sounds exactly like something from Lord of the Rings. Absolutely. Alright, uh, I didn't actually target a planet. I just headed out this way. We're going to Adikia and then Rumba. Or the mod author Arendel? Yeah. Alright. Uh, what are we doing in the meantime? I remember there was something that I was looking to get done remotely, but I don't know what it is. Ooh, we're nearly sending plate up again. Do we have icy glowing uh, Naquim ingot furnaces? And it's almost completely saturated as well. That means it's been running consistently for a long time. Very 
very good. Can the ship not run without power? No, not really. Uh, every ship has this arbitrary minimum. Actually, this is a good example. Uh, some of our ships are actually stuck because they have no power. Because somehow they ran out of... Uh, this one's not water, actually. This one has no power because it has no nuclear fuel. Um, it has an arbitrary minimum speed of 0.37. Uh, and it'll go that fast without having to shoot down any asteroids or anything. But its current ETA to get back to Nalvis is 214 hours and 20 minutes. That is a little longer than I'm prepared to wait. Yeah, that might be a bit too long. Um, so how's our science looking? No particle stream still. I mean, we have a little bit here. We seem to be bottlenecking on... Ah, there's your problem. That would probably help. Annihilation data is one of the easy ones, though. Uh, what about... This one needs an aquarium plate... Uh, this one... We don't have super cool thermo fluid here. Uh, I sent the spiders away from there because I thought I fixed it. What's this train doing? Not this again. Wait, we've got 2.4k here. We only requested 2k. How did this happen? I'm very curious about that. Also, how do we only have... Oh, I see. We actually have quite a lot of antimatter canisters. Just stick a lane balancer on it. Um, all of these output at an equal rate already. Um, but more to the point, request stack threshold 160. That's too much. Request stack threshold 40. Is this another train? No. A little bit further. Two thousand is what fits in a single cargo wagon. We're only requesting two thousand. A steel chest is bigger than a cargo wagon somehow. So I don't know why. Uh, what? What just happened? Oh, I think this was the same problem from before. Oh, it was five seconds, not five seconds of inactivity. I think I assumed uh, that that was five seconds of inactivity and then did this and then looked away and then was confused as to why we found this here again. And I probably changed this to 2000 exactly when that happened last time. So now this thing's going to go back to the depot. Cool. Alright. Um, so what's broken here? We've got super cold thermo fluid reaching everything on the right side it looks like and the left side is missing some undergrounds uh that would go here i think a 
that'll do it. Alright, so I was waiting on Naquim cubes, as always. This one is looking for super cool thermo fluid. That's not what I was expecting. Some of them have, it. yeah, no, all of them have everything but super cool thermo fluid. Even though we are out of Naquim cubes here. Okay, nearly all of them. Uh. Okay. I forgot to connect those. Where would be the best way to connect these now? And I think I'm going to have to put this here. It's only a handful of things that are going to get done now. Because we're still super bottlenecked on the actual resources. Why don't you up production of Naquim cubes? Uh, I am doing that. Naquim cubes is bottlenecked on Naqu uh, Naquim itself. Naquim plate. Everything is. We're just... Uh, spamming out more more ships to pick up Naquium, and when we have to we're going to make another mine at the same surface. Uh, there's a nice big juicy 15 million right here. It should give us about the same throughput as our existing Naquium mine. I'm curious, actually, um, does this ship have completely full chests? Nope, we're missing a little bit here. We've also got a bot hovering, though. 477. Uh, it looks like... Oh, it's extremely close to full. That was actually a really good guess. When I dropped down the requirement by 100. Are you consuming all Nequium though, or are the mines backing up? Uh, they're not backing up right now, I don't think. Yeah, no. But because we had some issues where a bunch of ships were sort of stuck, um, because they were too full of water, they didn't have power, but they sort of didn't have power. Um, they were getting slower and slower as they left the solar system. So we had a bunch of ships all uh, bunched up together. Which um, doesn't really help things. You know what I could do here actually is go back to not having storage chests. Because the, then the bots will only be in motion to bring Naquium to the ship. And we won't get that weird negative signal because they're moving Naquium around. And I won't have to drop this by 100. But then... I guess they're only going to fill up these storage chests if and when the ships aren't actually keeping up. So it's not going to make that much of a difference. Oh. Um... Hmm. Should have thought of that. Okay, I have an idea. And then we're going to turn that back into a green chest. Set requests. These bots will get kidnapped and taken back home. Uh, that should work out okay. 
And we're bumping this back up to 15.8a. Boss Beck, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Redeem name in base, no worries. How about up here? Uh, we got a P. OSP. O S P. And then we need a C. H. Do we want numbers? Where can I get an H? There we go. What module levels do you have in your Naquium chain? Uh, mostly level 6, and we've got a few tier 9s that we've got for free um, that I jammed in there. I probably shouldn't have put those, I think it's like 1 or 2, tier 9. Um, yeah, there's literally one tier 9 module here. Maybe it would have been better with the limited supply of them to put it at the next step, where we turn the Naquitite into Crush Naquitite. Because more Naquitite is going to go through that Crusher. I suppose. How do I get colors for the name? Uh, just ask. Or do you mean how do you physically do it? Uh... Yeah, you can just ask, but if you if you use uh, use colors and just feed it with a constant combinator, it'll uh, it'll use colors. All right, so we are nine minutes out. Oh, we should have a new ship up here. Fantastic. That means the uh, the spaceship floor that was missing was just because of that train that I left parked there on manual mode for about a year. I was about to design a uh, construction ship before I got distracted by that that's going to use antimatter engines. Uh, I would like it to be able to park here. So... Uh, is going to be 99, I suppose. I'm guessing that's what I did here. Yep. Alright. It doesn't have to be that big. Although, I guess um, with our hull strength now, we can make it rather large indeed. I'll just make it bigger than I'm actually going to make it, because that's easier for the way... It, it's easy to build and then just trim the floor. As opposed to trying to figure out where we're putting something into a void. So just one or two antimatter engines. I guess we'll do two for the symmetry. And a console somewhere. We I guess if we're running antimatter off of nuclear power, uh we really don't need a whole lot of condenser turbines. I'll probably go for the two nuclear reactors, if only for symmetry and fuel efficiency, like we've done before. We 
we could do it this way. Or... Or what? Could do it like this. Might be a bit neater. What other designs have I used? For the nuclear ones. I don't want to do that same one again. Uh, the other arguably neater designs that I've used have been built off of energy beam receivers. I don't really want to make one more ship that needs energy beam receivers. This design... Yeah, I might steal that from the player ship here. Do you need all four heat exchangers? Um, possibly. We'll think. We'll, we'll calculate that. We'll have a look. Oh, it's actually supposed to be wider. Well, it doesn't have to be. We just need one of these clamps to line up. Um, let's just remove the clamps. Remove the walls. Cut that. And maybe we'll put this here. It's actually pretty good. So if we do this, we have 5.82 times 4 megawatts. 23.28. Uh, I guess, yeah, we already figured this out. With four engines, um, we really don't have much trouble. I'm more or less going to be designing this ship, but with uh, a lot more chests, and maybe it'll be a bit slower. Probably not... Hmm. If I keep it under 527 container stress, we probably don't even need it to go any slower. If we're going to put shield projectors on... Do I really want to just build this ship again? We'll need to have a roboport. I guess that can be here. But the roboport needs to have um, at least one chest with an inserter. Some of those heat pipes could be removed. Don't know if it affects the capacity much. Uh, not really. And I like the symmetry of it. Yeah, I think I want more solar panels and maybe even like double roboports. Um, as opposed to four engines and so on. We're mostly going to be using this thing remotely anyway, so it doesn't have to be that fast. Um... This is actually pretty good in terms of power though. It does dip into the accumulators a little bit sometimes, and that's kind of perfect actually. So, how about, how about we figure out where this is going to fit? I might like the look of this, to be honest. Why not use the high temperature turbine? Uh, because it's huge, compared to what I want the size of this ship to be. And also, um, to support the high temperature turbine generator, we either need a energy beam receiver or antimatter um, 
an antimatter reactor, which is really expensive, and it actually goes through the antimatter fuel much, much faster than I thought it would. Uh, I haven't really played with it much. Um, I just sort of had a quick look at it in editor extensions, but from what I've seen, it's not... This is very tentative, but um, the jump in efficiency going to antimatter fuel is incredible. Uh, not so much if we're burning it for electricity. I think antimatter reactors are more for running bases, yeah. How fast is this chip? Its top speed is 234.89. And it manages that through um, asteroid fields as well. Noxyway Gaming, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I think this time I just want a couple of engines. That should be more than sufficient. And we'll put just a couple of tanks here. Um, on second thought, I would like, I would like this thing to have a lot of range, so let's do that. Too slow, 300 is standard, ouch. Let's put some walls, oh, I thought it would block me from placing them. The bots won't place them, will they? Or... wait, what? Yeah, yeah, we can't place walls over... the shields. I'm pretty sure if we just keep the shields up and build walls where we can, uh, that's going to actually show us where the shields would be able to block. Imagine having a fast ship with a cargo rocket receiver on it. Uh, you could, but I don't think the landing pad is going to work, except for when the ship lands. 2BD, name and base, no worries. Uh, where do we want to put it? Up here? Oh, like this or like this? B, B. Two, B. D. And yeah. all good. Speaking of landing pads and nine by nine, and I thought you could use them as large warehouse chests, but only five hundred and twelve com capacity means they aren't actually that efficient. Yeah, except you can have like lots of inserters um, pointed at them. And have one big unanimous, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? One big unified storage area for a bunch of stuff. Lovely, thank you. But you'd use it to travel without cargo and then build with the materials you send over. I guess. Although the cargo rocket is just as likely to crash uh, if you go a long distance. I guess we're doing this. Trouble is it takes a moment for the bots to get here.
Also, it looks kind of odd. And that's the middle. And I'm sure we can put walls here. Alright, let's remove ghosts. And that's our shape. I can actually flip the console, surprisingly enough. Okay, that should be streamlined. I have, in fact, I have no doubt that it will be. We can put our uh, clamps here. It's going to look a little bit strange. Maybe I'll move this back a little bit. So the question remains... How much space do we really need? Oh. We need room for the input-output for the fuel, unfortunately. So maybe here is going to be where most of the chests are. We'll put the roboport up the front, perhaps? Um, I don't think we can fit a solar panel here. How about back this way somewhere? We can fit, like, four of them if we do this. So we'll have our... What is this? Ion stream. Hmm. If we're going to use the same, uh, wait, no. I was going to say if we're going to use the same gantries to resupply these things. Yeah, no, that is where the iron stream goes. We're going to have to build around what's already here. So where do we put water in? Up there. I could... Uh, I don't love this, but maybe I could just put the pipe there so we can still use this. And I would need to read that. That's not... That's fine. I'm just gonna disconnect that for the moment. Put that there for the sake of symmetry. I kind of hate this, to be honest, but... I don't really want to add more piping over here. Oops. I guess we're putting a little bit of water in. Auto save. If I move, hmm, maybe I could move the shields up a couple of tiles. And then we could have the IO for the nuclear reactor next to the console. Put a couple of solar panels here, and then we don't have this back here. 
the other side of the pipe is messed up at the pump. Yeah, I did that on purpose because I didn't want to actually put this in here yet. Until I've made up my mind. Huh. Pick a dollies lets us move shield projectors, but... The shields themselves don't actually get switched off or moved or anything. Okay. So that means all of these can get moved up two tiles, right? One, two. Two. And if we really want to, one, two. And then a couple of solar panels up here, get rid of all of that. We need some lasers, of course. How many lasers do we have on this ship? A total of nine, but we've got twice as many engines. Don't forget the side doors you wanted. Yeah, that would be good. I definitely want doors next to... next to the clamps or just near the console. Like here, probably. It's pretty good. That's probably super overkill, actually. That's the same number of lasers, but we know that this ship is going to be slower. And then... Accumulators. I guess that's a pretty snug spot. How close can we put this? Um, not quite right up next to this, but we can put it here. If I limit the build to that, how many chests can we fit? Enough, I imagine. So we're going to have antimatter stream coming in like so. It's going to be a slight nuisance to add that there, but... Well, this was just a one-off, I'm pretty sure. Hi all, what's the current project? Dardanu, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, current project is I'm building a antimatter version of our, uh, our construction ships, our outposters. Because Ion is out. And also we've got way, 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 way more hull stress to play with now. But I'm also trying to fit it in the same gantries that we've been using um, for our construction ship, so I don't have to build another. Hmm. I don't love that bit of the front of it there. Maybe the doors could be done here, actually. Right onto the red carpet. Yeah, I like that better. Uh, 
and a couple more accumulators. All right, so what's our hull stress? The bots can pick this up, right? Yeah. That is not a spaceship floor. Actually, I have a deconstruction planner for this. Make it a lot easier. Did you give up on the Robopot? We've got one here. Oh. Uh, although, now that you mention it, uh, I don't quite have room to have a chest inserting into it if we do it this way. Um, I'll probably just move these two laser turrets, like, back here. I kind of like the look of that a little bit better. Somehow. So we're going to have a chest here. Um, I might make that a green, actually. This probably won't be this part of here. Trim that. All of my ships look like bullets now. Uh, we can't really do the integrity check properly until the bots pick this up. I think they're coming from another robot network. Yep. That's going to get recycled back to the mall, but still. Okay. So this is one megawatt, one megawatt... Do I want to add... I could make this a radar construction pylon. Supply area 0, construction area 64 by 64. Construction area 256 by 256. That is a significant boost. What's this one? 110 by 110. Yeah, I think I'd like to make this a radar construction pylon. Oh no. Uh, it's going to link these two RoboPot networks when we do that. Uh, we could put it up here, perhaps? Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't mind that. Although maybe I would prefer the look of it if it was up here. Um, can we reach this over here, perhaps? Do we not have radar construction pylons in this block? We do. We very clearly do. Oh, I put in the wrong one. That's why. Okay. That actually connects to our spaceship clamps. Um, so maybe this isn't really super necessary. Although the only thing I can think to put there is another emulator. Um, I'm pretty sure we still have room to fill this up with way too many um, chests. I really wish those bot networks didn't overlap. If I get rid of this, uh... 
Why do we even have bots here? Oh, it's in case the spaceships crash. That's why. Yeah, if I can be bothered to completely phase out all of this, um, we wouldn't have this problem anymore. I don't mind the look of that. Uh, so, we're at 220 container stress. Let's say we fill this up entirely. I'm sure this is going to be more than it takes to reach... Actually, is it? We're going to have inserters here, here, and one over here. Container stress is only 1,348. We actually could do this. Just close your eyes and decon planner the entire block. Indeed. Uh, should I add more at the back and just go all the way to 2k? It's going to cost a lot more to take off from a planet if I do that. Yeah, I feel like I'm already pushing it a bit. Um, counterintuitive as it is, this thing would be like 30% or 40%. It'd take 40% more antimatter fuel for that thing to take off from a planet than this thing would. You don't need more than this to construct anything. Yeah. I think I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna roll back how many chests this thing has. Oh, we're here. At Adikia. Adikia? Uh, there's a, just a couple of biters. Also, did I remember to delete surface on those other ones? Can we delete surface on Plato? We can. Nice. Cool. That keeps the save file just that little bit smaller. More importantly, the save time doesn't become extra gargantuan. No biters in sight. Except inside. I believe that is a speed module. I'm definitely liking this more with a couple more exoskeleton legs. It's not like I'm using my robo... Uh, it's not like I'm using my power armor all that often. In fact, I could probably cut down on the batteries even more. More faster. Just that little bit. Alright, let's step outside for the janitor. Venna, 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 Venna. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm gonna just pick this up first. And let's give this a screenshot. Speaking of deleting surfaces, my single spider full of legs has just cleared the last 20% of Navas, and I have five spawners left before I can delete surface. Nice. Do you mean delete or... Wait, did you leave Navas? Uh... This is called Adikia. We need to go to Rumba as well. And 
And let me just grab that screenshot. Trim the part we're interested in. Oh no, there's plus 20 stone on that screenshot. Well, what are you going to do? And then... Onto the Discord. Confirm hostile extinction and trim. Yeah, I figured. Revan, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, we'll definitely get rid of most of these chests. They look kind of tacky anyway, up at the front. What are we down to? 964? Should we go all the way back down to like 523? Oops. I was afraid of that. I think I'd rather have chests here, depending on the count. Oh, that's kind of close. Uh, the whole stress went down more than I thought it would. How about this? There's bots coming from down south, aren't there? Yep. Anytime you're ready. And go. Five oh eight and five oh four, that's actually really good and close. I could probably add a couple more accumulators or something. Just to use up that free hull stress. Five twelve. Uh, and that accumulator in the middle was so snug, too. Gotta wait for a butt to pick it up again. This is the only reason I should upgrade uh, flying robot speed. Actually, how much, uh, we need 3,200, okay. Pack one, we've got 1,000, are we only requesting 1,000? We are requesting 2,000, so that tells me we probably don't have any back here, but I think the request stack threshold was nothing actually provide stack threshold okay still one chest in the front still one chest in the front oh that one uh that's for the robo port um because we need to have a reserve of bots just in case Um, so let's integrity check, Bush Bon, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well, 508 and 508, it doesn't get, well, it's literally 0.5 off, but it doesn't really get any closer than that, uh, I think I'm pretty happy with this, um, what time is it? We got 15 minutes left. I can 
get this working. So I want to do some fuel management. Um, I want... I kind of want to do... No. I don't want to be too greedy. We're just going to use these chests for nuclear fuel. I don't want any risk of this running out. In fact, on the off chance that... On the off chance that we want to still build a remote outpost with nuclear fuel, or give nuclear fuel... Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Nope. Stop. Stop. I'll let you live this time. The inserters will put things off balance again? Oh. Oh no, I deconstructed the spaceship console. Rip. Uh, so we are going to look at... Maybe two of the... Uh, of the whole meme accumulators for the speed signal so that we get a maximum speed of 200 but we don't have to use a combinator. We will be needing a constant combinator somewhere for the spaceship clamp stuff. Um, I might just connect all of this actually. Instead of doing it this way, no, that's going to look bad as well. Okay, if accumulator charge is dropping, uh, that's when we're going to put nuclear fuel in. And I'm going to... Well, we might need to take it for a test drive to make sure the accumulator charge normally stays completely full. But based on this design, I think it will. We are at Rumba as well. Um, but when accumulator charge drops below some amount, we're going to put... We're going to take out the used up uranium fuel cells. And we're only going to put fuel in when that happens. No biters? Nice and fast. Another efficiency module. All right, let's step outside for the janitor. And back inside. Screenshot. And we'll be on our way. I think we're heading back to Nalvis orbit now, right? Uh, this is called Rumba. Oops. Uh, let's head back first. Just double check... Yeah, we were going to clear this out. Well, how much fuel do we have? Quite a lot. I think we can do at least one planet in this system before we go. Why don't we do the biggest one and nothing else? Maybe we can do all of these. Oof. Okay, luckily we don't have to go to that one. So, Gorilla? We're going to Gorilla. Alright. Uh, crop this, and... What was this planet called? A Rumba? 
Oh, sorry, Rumba. Save as Rumba. Throw it in the Discord. Uh, Fantastic. Going back to Monk. Uh, where are we on that new design? So I was going to actually connect this like so. We're going to read hand contents. Pulse or hold doesn't really matter. Um, speed signal less than 190 let's say 180 if it drops by 10 percent we probably need to put more fuel in and on this one stack size one uranium fuel cell has to be greater than zero and that's it Um, just to save on messy wiring, I kind of want to connect this one, but I know that's kind of, whatever, we're doing it. Oh, except this has to be less than 90. Luckily, we hadn't actually made any used up uranium fuel cells yet. Alright, so this is going to have the clamp IDs uh, 99 to 99. Uh, let's do both of them. Do we need anything else on this? Let's look at our old design. Nope. I guess we... Because we manually send this all over the place. Um... And I think I just want that to be a... Prof a passive provider. We should definitely have at least a storage chest. And I guess we could make... I was going to say things a bit more symmetrical, but I want to keep the hull stress and container stress close. Unless we end up with significantly more hull stress. Maybe we should just go for a bit more hull stress. Things like scaffolding, especially, uh, we tend to want to carry a lot of that. How many chests do we have outside of the nuclear and bots? Twelve. Uh, and here we have like 14 or more. What's our stress here? 654. I think we should just go for a few more containers. Um, I want at least one storage chest, except the only trouble with that is the bots in this block might use it for something. We really just have to manually swap it from being a storage chest or not. In which case... We can do that with whichever chest. Hostiles include worms as well. Awkward. Iridium pile drivers can clean up now. Yes, indeed. 
They're a bit expensive, but the automation that they offer so long before you can get energy beaming is uh, uh, helpful to say the least. Can I pick a dollies as well? So, which side do I like better? I think, I think this side. Is the pile driver actually worth it? I've been using nukes. Uh, it's a bit expensive for what it does. Like really quite expensive. The weapon delivery cannon with nukes, yeah. These can just be passive providers because uranium fuel cells in this block will be brought over here. Used up uranium fuel cells, that is. Um, so what are we up to stress-wise? 600? I think we can go a bit higher. I'm happy with 700, I think. And we can still probably have an abundance of fuel and whatnot with that. Not to mention decent speed. That's only 652. Um, that actually kind of makes it almost more symmetrical. And we're going to connect the RoboPort to this inserter, set filters blacklist, and we're going to read robot statistics. And I think instead of available, we're just going to go for total. Construction box, let's say... Oh, right, I need a constant combinator if I'm going to do that, so that I can offset it. Let's make that kind of symmetrical. Uh, available, I mean total logistic bots. Total construction bots, set filters blacklist. And then we're going to use a negative. Say you can have more than this, actually. So, let's say three stacks of each. Uh, 150. So, negative 149. Uh, we can also put robo... Not robo. Uh, repair packs in here. How about we go 2,000, 2,000, and rest is repair packs. And that is eight stacks for repair packs. I'd use glaives, but I'm not quite at that tech level yet. Yeah, glaives are magnificent, honestly. Okay, um, so now I just have to go through and like pick all the stuff that I actually want our new construction ship to carry. Um, we should give it a test run at least, but first I need to, oh that might actually be a problem. No, it should be fine. Up can go there. And then... Is this five? It is five. Fantastic. I'm not overly concerned about pumping antimatter in from the left as well. 
So we've got our uh, water. Looking for 24,500. Oh, wait, I should do what... Um, I should do what I was doing... Can this reach across? It cannot. It would be nice if I had something to connect this with. Um, we don't actually need any circuitry from the spaceship clamps to talk to the console with these, though. Um, but yeah, I was thinking we could do the loop. So we'll say if we're greater than 24.5k... What is this? Oh, I remember this. If we're greater than 24.5k water, we're going to pump it out. And if we're less than... Uh, let's make it, sorry, 24,000. To 24.5k. So that way, when we get water stuck in the condenser turbines... Uh, it's definitely going to be able to cycle out, and we'll end up with the right amount of water in here. Quite happy I thought of that. It, it takes the uncertainty out of um, putting the right amount of water into these. We could probably fly a lot closer to the... Uh, a lot flo we could probably fly a lot closer to the sun. That is not connected where it's supposed to be. Uh, in terms of... Almost completely filling up our water here. Especially since we don't have a... Uh, high temperature turbine generator. That has... Th that'll have like literally 2000 water inside of it. This will add up to something like... 800 or maybe a thousand. All right, time for a test drive before we finish the stream. Let's go to Calidus Orbit. New course plotted. Uh, I think we've got way more than enough antimatter stream to do that. I'm not too worried about letting all of this get supplied just yet. Disabled. Requires fuel in booster tanks. I think we just need to integrity check again. Yep, there we go. 914 gigajoules out of 24. Let's go. Oh, I didn't give it a name. What's it called? The Falcon. And let's see how we go with speed and such. ETA to Calidus Orbit is already less than five minutes. I think we're going to get to at least 120 or so. That Streamlabs quote thing has been rather talkative today. I should probably slow it down. Uh, I think we're going to get to about 120. Maybe I should put quad engines on these things. Uh, I really need to see right now how fast our old ones are. Elvis Orbit. Go. Hundred and fourteen, hundred and fifteen. It's looking like a hundred and twenty was about right, actually. How's our power? About what I expected. That's that's perfect, actually. So we very occasionally dip into accumulator charge at all. I need to test it going through uh, maximum density, but I think it'll probably be about the same as 
the player ship, whereby accumulated charge doesn't really dip until we're out of heat. Just editor extension the biters away. I just used a console command to clear them all off now, versus it's not cheating, just speeding up. Fair enough. Yeah, I like the as close as we can get to symmetry with this bit. Why are the bots still... Oh no. They're taking the repair packs from the roboport to put them in the buffer chest that's there to give repair packs to the... Let's, let's not actually. Thank you. We can just keep our repair packs here, I guess. So we should be up to speed by now. 121. Almost exactly what I estimated. And our old design. Uh, even with the solar power to help it. 25. Wait, what? Why? Something is asymmetrical here. What? What happened to this ship? I think... I, I think uh, our outposters do normally just have the four lasers though, right? Yeah. Oh, I think I accidentally... Something doesn't look the same here. Poster one. There's just uh, an accumulator missing. That's weird. Well, as long as it works. Why is our speed so low, though? No fuel, a thousand degrees. There's no water. It's been sitting there so long it used up all the water. Oh my goodness. That's surprising. Uh, what about the other one? Outpost of two. Okay, it's still got a ton of water. Well, it's... No, this doesn't make sense. If we've got solar power, we're not using up the water. How... did you run out of water? Well, I guess we don't really get to... Let's let's take Outpost of 2 for a quick joyride. We're going to aim it at Heliolite for a second. Heliolite. Off you go. I'm really interested to see what our old speed was. Falcon is halfway to Calidus. So the only question now is, do I want to add a couple more engines? We would only need a little, little bit more pipe to make that work. Or I could do what we did at the back of this ship, which looks pretty good. It also gives us room for another panel or roboport or chests or something. Uh, let's see. Outpost of two. Oh, I think we have our answer right here. Its top speed is 74. Except that it probably slows down after it gets that fast. Yeah, that's not that much of an increase in speed. I think I want to put more engines on this new ship. Alright, you can go back to Penthus. And... Falcon. Please go back to Nalvis Orbit.
where we will be doubling your speed. Well, maybe not doubling, um, but we'll be putting twice as many engines on. I think we can probably handle the power consumption for that matter. I mean, it'll be very, very similar to this design. Not too worried about that. I would go on a three engine setup just to overcome ETOPS limitation. ETOPS. Damn, this mod looks cool. It really is. Trap, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Sydney Kansen von Ice T. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. The only thing about using three engines is I can't put one in the middle, so that's unacceptable. SE is pretty amazing, absolutely. I guess maybe I could have used an odd number of engines on our mining ships. But this looks pretty cool. I like this one a lot. Okay. Are we nearly at Grilla? One minute. I think we'll do that next time. We've gone a bit over time today. Uh, where's our new ship? Falcon is going to be a few minutes getting back as well. Let's find a stream to raid. I went to bed and woke back up and you're still streaming? Aren't you tired? Not that tired. Uh, we got Tumbling Satellite. I've raided Tumbling a few times. I think we might give someone else a go. Uh, the Totally Straightforward Map. What does that mean? Diablo tries Crestorio to... Oh, that's his... That's his thanks for watching card. Okay, never mind. If only ships could drift on two engines. Thanks for stream again. No worries. Thanks for hanging out. Sounds like me. 32 hour days are completely normal. The rest of the world are the strange ones. Uh, well, I'm not uh, working right now. Although I will have to quite soon. So probably my streaming schedule is going to suffer, unfortunately. Uh, why don't we... Who should we raid? Um, poorly prepared. I was being completely serious though, no sarcasm. Oh. Uh, Alright, let's just go with... I think we will go for tumbling today. Wait, why is it not... Oh, there we go. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you like. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And, uh... Stay safe. Till next time. Take care, guys. Thanks, Tardano. Thanks, So, there we go. This pet. Tyrannosaurus with a raid again. Welcome on in, friend. Welcome on in, raiders. No, I can't type your name. <laughs> I'm going to copy paste it. How are you doing? How's everyone doing? Still on space exploration, I guess? Hope that went well. You're joining us right at the beginning here.